está ahí arriba. ¿Cuál es? El, el de la, bueno, el que lo llamaron Modesto. <coughs> de, la, de la Warren y de... Sí, sí, ya, 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 ya. Good evening and welcome to the Ordinance Subcommittee. Today is Thursday, September 28. Members are present, Councilor Modesto Maldonado and Councilor Giovanni Rodriguez. Councilor, can I get a motion to approve the minute of August 24? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Okay, the first item and the agenda is document 17617 is the review modification of the resident seeker parking on Fairmont Street as the published. Um, Councilor, we have the report from offices column, but we're still waiting for a uh, recommendation for DPW. What do you want to do with this? Um, We'd like to make a motion to send it to the full council with no recommendation pending uh, Documentations and uh, pending documentation from DPW. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. The next document is document 31317 is International Energy Conversation Stretch Code Adoption Request. And that has been put in the agenda by Commissioner Peter Blanchett. Good evening. Good evening, Madam Chair. Good evening, Councillors. Good evening. Councillors, what I have before you is a proposal by the city to uh, improve our energy conservation efforts in the city. Um, in, 19, uh, in 2006, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts established uh, new energy codes uh, to be followed um, in new construction. Um, they came out with two different codes. They came out with one that was um, 
easier to swallow, let me say, uh, for, most com for a lot of communities. The second one was, that would be the normal um, energy code. The second one was the uh, energy stretch code. By qualifying for the energy stretch code, the city then qualifies to be considered a green community, which is um, something that the city desires to, to be, um, uh, be called. Um, it raises the, the, uh, the bar on the amount of energy conservation um, that builders are required to put into their, uh, into their construction. The, um, the energy code um, that we're asking, the stretch code, the first question that always comes up is cost. Um, we're very lucky. First, let me say that this stretch code, these new provisions are added provisions. We're already uh, following the regular um, energy codes and uh, <coughs> we're having um, great success with it and great savings for homeowners. Our builders in the city, the ones that are going to be affected by this, are already um, pretty much reaching the stretch code as we speak. Uh, so there's uh, not going to be too much difference in um, what the builders are expected to do or what uh, my department, the building department, is expected to inspect. Um, the, the, the added costs uh, to each builder would average maybe uh, 12 to uh, $2,200 to maybe to $2,500. As I said, the uh, um, most of the builders are, are, are just about complying with this. Uh, we, we, we had a, a session with all the new builders. Now let me also explain real quickly that this uh, new stretch code would only affect new uh, residential buildings, newly built residential buildings. It'll go into effect in about six months. So buildings that have a hole in the ground already are already in progress will not be affected by the new code. Um, we, we sat down with most of the um, contractors, I think all of the contractors that have been known to uh, do this type of uh, new uh, residential construction in the city, their uh, infill building in our city, uh, most of you know who they are. Uh, we sat down with them, we explained what we were doing um, in unison, they were in support of this, I'm sure they'll come to the full council if there's any questions to, um, uh, to, to say that. Also, too, might I add, by becoming a green community, um, this is going to allow the city to apply for numerous grants that become available from the state and federal government because we're making these energy conservation efforts, not only through DPW with these grants where we're doing public buildings and those types of things. This one here would be for the building department so that we can oversee the new construction. It does not affect commercial buildings. Um, it, the only time it would affect a, a commercial building if it's brand new. We have very, very few uh, brand new commercial buildings. It does not affect, uh, it won't add cost to the renovation of the new, uh, of the old commercial buildings that you see a lot of happening here in the city. So the benefits that we are going to get out of this is, is great. The consumer have, th themselves um, see a, a, a huge added benefit. Although the, uh, the added cost for, um, for uh, meeting the requirements by the builders will, of course, be passed on to the consumers. However, through the um, rebates, um, et cetera, that is afforded uh, the people that are buying these homes through uh, Energy Star and other companies and having a certificate of what they call a HERS rating, which is a home energy rating, uh, which will be required for new homes constructed. They'll have that certificate and be able to apply for, for grants because of their energy conservation. The average home, um, 27 to uh, 3,000 square foot, uh, we'd be talking um, up, up, up to twelve to fifteen hundred dollars a year in energy cost savings. So uh, by the, the two thousand, although the homeowner most of the time isn't building the home, when you add it up, the the cost over a thirty year mortgage would be maybe a um, hundred dollars. But it's definitely made up per year in the um, in the in the savings of these ratings. So. Uh, there's 127 communities as of um, September 18th of this year that have uh, became green communities and have adopted this stretch code. Um, 
I would also say that we, I did mention that the grants are available. We are in the process of applying for a grant, and this would uh, help us, uh, re this is mandatory for us to get this grant that's gonna help um, provide energy savings to our school buildings and our civic buildings, as well as energy savings to uh, new home buyers in the community. Um, I don't think I have much more to add than that. Um, I, I, as a building commissioner, um, think it's a sensible thing to do. I wanted to do it um, seven, eight years ago when I, when I first got interested in the new energy code. Um, it it, it, it kind of just fell through the cracks at that <coughs> point. I will also point out that we'd be, we'd be taking a lead um, along with the other 127, we'd be 128. And, um, all the rest of the communities within the next five years will be complying with this code anyway. Um, it will be becoming, um, it's set to become mandatory under the state building codes. Um, it, under the, I, I think not the next edition that's coming out, probably the, uh, two more editions. So that would be about five or six more years. So pretty much we would be doing this. We're doing it a little quicker. Uh, as I said, we do have an outstanding grant, however there's, um, other grants that uh, we can s seek out by being labeled a green community, and we'd also have in our pocket the fact that we do um, we do require uh, compliance with the energy stretch code for our residents. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you, Councilor Maldonado. Uh, Peter, the uh, y this ordinance is going to apply it only to new buildings, new residential buildings, mm -hmm. new residential. That's correct. Uh, how about those buildings that, for example, have extensive rehab, if they have, have, have a fire and they're required to, so it's not going to apply Not to at all. Um, um, some of the, um, because they're rated, they'd be rated as a whole. We can't, if, if someone's rebuilding after a fire council, we, we have to look at what they're repairing. Mm -hmm. And this type of rating has to take the whole envelope, so it really wouldn't work. Uh, to do that. When they go in with these HERS raters, the home energy uh, rating system, when those HERS raters go into a building, they look at the building as a whole. They're, they're checking for window leakages. They're checking for ductwork leakages. They do testing. They call a blower test. They put this large blower uh, on, the, on the front door and they shove air in and they, they seek out leaks through you know, some technology that they're capable of doing. They then, they then, they then give a score and uh, uh, builders would require to come up to a, um, an 80% score. Um, most of our, um, I'm, I'm proud to say, and I'm, I'm proud of the builders that we have, most of our builders are already over uh, 80%. What are the specific items? I, I know, for example, that in new construction, all rehab, ad new additions, uh, uh, two by six are required with six inch insulation. Uh, is that staying the same or is that gonna change? No, that will stay the same. Uh, stay. Okay. Most of those, those, uh, those are things that are being done under the regular uh, energy code. This brings it a little bit more. It brings in uh, um, vapor barriers. It's more intensive on sealing of windows, sealing, um, a lot of times you'll seal, the, the, they seal, well not a lot of times, but they seal the windows when they're, when they're installed. However, the stud work next to the windows mm -hmm. ends up sometimes, as you know, when you tear off the sheetrock, there's still a cavity there. They're, they're checking as, as minutely as that. They're checking for leakages between, um, uh, between the floors of the house. They're checking for leakages around uh, something as minute as the uh, electronic equipment uh, wires uh, going between the houses because I, um, it all adds up evidently. Okay. No more questions. So I'm just asking, if I can just say one thing, I'm just asking for a, a favorable recommendation. We'll bring this up to the council and uh, hopefully we could get a favorable vote. I thank you for your time. Thank you. I'm just going to repeat it, and if I'm passing any wrong information, just stop me. So this is going to apply only to residential commercial building. This will apply only to new construction, new construction. Of residential buildings. Residential, not so much commercial building. No, it, 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 that, that goes. It has to. They have to meet a new, a, a high, a very high square footage for that. So, like a small, <coughs> um, a small building 
in the city that's going to be used as a commercial as building a commercial. wouldn't even come under that. We'd be talking about buildings like they build in the industrial park. Okay. Councillor Rodriguez. Sure. Um, right now, the city of Lawrence um, obeyed the uh, International mm -hmm. Building Code, right? That's correct. 2009. That's correct. We, we, we adopted the International Building Code uh, 2009. However, we do have, as you know, we have um, adopted, uh, we kept the uh, first Chapter 1 of uh, our Mass State Building Code as an amendment to it. So the only thing that makes us different is Chapter 1 in that code. We have, uh, the state has their own, they kept their own Chapter 1, which is much more stri stringent than um, all right, so, and we, um, there is any other, um, because I, I remember when I was taking this course that the International Energy Conservation Code was part of the training. So there is any other code that we, not, that we haven't adopted yet, but uh, we must in the city of Lawrence? Oh, this is the, the last one that we need to adopt. This is a, uh, a recommended code. This was never mandatory. It, it will be mandatory, but it was never mandatory. Um, we're, we're taking this basically voluntarily t to be named it. We, uh, when they came out with this code, they also came out with a, resident, uh, a regular residential uh, energy code. So cities could pick and choose. Did they want to do the, the more stringent one, or did they want to do what we did is we kept it, you know, the, the new energy code that came out in 2006 and uh, 2009 um, is much more stringent than what we had, you know, years back, and, and it's, a, it's still a very good code. This one um, just takes it up a little bit, and we have the option, and we have the option to adopt it, and that's what I'm asking for. All right, so no, I, no, I, I, got, I, got, I, I get it, what you want to do, and that's exactly what, what need to happen, you know, as soon as, as, soon as those codes become available. Uh, there is any other code that it is recommended to be adopted by any municipality that we haven't yet? No. This is, this is the last one. That would be the last. We, we might come when the, uh, when the um, International Building Code goes to another edition, which they're hoping to come out, whether it's going to come out as uh, 2015. We're always about two years behind. Um, there may be something that's in there. I haven't seen, I've been attending sessions. I haven't seen anything outstanding that would need the requirement. We already have an, uh, uh, an umbrella in our ordinance that lets us accept the codes as they're amended and as they're... Um, oh, okay proposed. Oh, okay. So it doesn't have to come here. Right. All right. That's good. All right. Definitely, I would like to see this happening more often as soon as those codes become available because that means that the city is up to code as well um, in terms of um, regulations. I would like to make a motion to send this item to the full council with a fair recommendation. To order public hearing. To order public hearing. To order public hearing, please? Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. Here. I second the motion. Motion has been made. Properly second. All those in favor? Aye. The ayes have it. Thank you, Madam Chair. He has the recommendation with him already, okay. and he was going to send it because this is the time already been discussed probably four times. So then I have so to, to read it. it over. So I have to read it one by one then. No, just then listen this up and then we take the order as a block. That's in the middle. Hmm? That is in the middle. <coughs> is um, okay. Can I get a motion to take document three seventeen out of order? So move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Document 31717 is a stop sign exit in Warren Street, um, safety mitigation. Uh, Councillor Rodriguez? Yes, um, this item is a stop sign on exit on Warren Street. Uh, we were supposed to have the recommendation today because this, this, uh, this uh, specific stop sign has been put on the agenda probably three or four times before. And um, I, I spoke with the, uh, with the person 
I have that recommendation to be able to get it today. He told me that he was going to send it. Probably something happened. But I would like to uh, send this item to the full council to order a public hearing pending the recommendation from uh, Officer Scanlon and the GPW director. I second the motion for discussion. Sure. Second for discussion. Uh, Madam Chair, I believe that this, uh, as uh, Councillor Rodriguez indicated, uh, this item has come in front of us uh, probably on more than one occasion. Mm -hmm. And I know that the recommendation of Officer Scanlon before has been a negative one. Uh, but uh, it seems to me that uh, because of the outcry of the uh, citizens in that area, uh, uh, I believe that we should try it and see what happens. So I'm definitely going to support this uh, uh, to, to see if it, if it works out. Yeah. Okay. So uh, more. To send it to the full council. Uh, pending. Order probably here and pending the documentation from I'll Officer Scott. I'll and second the motion. Yeah. The motion has uh, been properly seconded. All those in favor? Aye. The ayes have it. Scott and the DPW director. Yeah. So can I get a motion to take document 314, 315, 316, 318, and 319 as a block? So move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. The document 314 to 319, we're going to send it to um, Officer Scallon for recommendation. Can I get a motion to send all so the moved. documents? Second. All those in favor? Aye. The ayes have it. Thank you. Cassandra, do you got all that? 314 to 319 as a block to send to Scanlon. Yeah, 314, 15, 16, 18, 19. 15, 16, 18, 19. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. So the next document is document 32017. It's a transfer rental license, 71 Main Street, and has been put on the agenda by Carmen Baez. Is Carmen present? Carmen, good evening. Name good. and address for for the record? Yes. My address is uh, 71 Main Street, Lawrence, Massachusetts. Uh, Carmen, uh, this is a renewed license or this is a new license? Renew. It's a renewed license. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm just checking all the papers since to be... Just give me one second. I don't see. Okay, I see here it was done two weeks ago and found to be okay. All the paper seems to be in order. It has been signed, signed by Walda Wallace. All the departments sign off, which is mean like uh, she doesn't own any taxes, any water. Madam Chair, I would like to make a motion that we send it up to the full council with a favor recommendation. Second the motion. Motion has been made, properly second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Um, Mrs. Bai, you need to come back for our next city council meeting, which is going to be next Tuesday at 7 o'clock? Yes. Thank you. Thank you for being here this evening. Okay, thank you. Document 32117 is also a transit rental license, 518 Howard Street, and has been put in agenda by Maver Zacarias. Okay. Name and address for the record. El nombre y la dirección para el reco. Uh, Pasión Estis Taco, eh, 68. Tu, tu, tu nombre y tu dirección. Maiver Zacarías. Mi dirección es 518 Howard Street. Ok. Um, this is a renewed license. Esto es una licencia para renovarla o, o es nueva? O es a new license? Es nueva. Es, es nueva. Es sí. a new license. So, what are you planning to sell? ¿Qué tú piensas vender? Uh, comida mexicana. Mexican food is what he's um, going to sell. Um, 
Mr. Zacharia, what I see here is that your truck need to be reinspected. So I'm going to explain a little bit about a transfer vendor license. We've been having a lot of complaints about the truck that we've been having because you're supposed to be moving every two hours if you don't have a, a people waiting in line. Uh, nosotros hemos tenido muchos problemas por de, eh, con los troces porque se parquean en un solo lado y usted está supuesto a moverse cada dos horas si no tiene una línea esperando. ¿Usted sabía eso? So, también yo leí aquí que su, su truck necesita ser otra vez inspeccionado. Okay. ¿Usted hizo el trabajo que usted necesitaba hacer? Sí, ¿Are you todo. working on the work that needs to be done? Sí, todo, todo estaba eh, inspeccionado. Eh, la que inspecciona lo inspeccionó antes de salir a vender. ¿Pero usted sabe que hay que volverlo a inspeccionar? No, no sabía. Truck inspection needed. Huh? Okay. So yeah. When was the last when was the last time that you inspect that truck? ¿Cuándo fue la última vez que usted inspeccionó ese vehículo? Eh, hace como diez días. Como diez. Diez días atrás. And before then, um, antes de de los diez días, ¿tú lo habías inspeccionado? Sí. Eh, Ya, ya estaba inspeccionado. Sí. Okay. Do you have any copy of the last inspection they did? Sí, pero se quedó en el carro afuera. ¿Dónde se quedó? En el carro tengo la copia sobre el. Pero aquí. No, lo tengo en el, um, en el restaurante. Tengo el restaurante y, y aparte um, el food truck que sale a vender afuera. So you don't have the um, the copy of the inspection. So uh, we can do. Table until he bring it down, um, right? Mm -hmm. You feel comfortable to table until he bring the the, the yep. next copy, because yep. yep. um, unfortunately we're not going to be able to send this up until we see that uh, the last report from the inspection service. So what we're going to do is we're going to table for our next um, ordinance meeting. You're going to bring the copy. Um, if he can come back today, you think that he's going to make it on time? So, ¿tú crees que tú lo puedes buscar hoy y traerlo? Hoy mismo, traerlo para acá. Ajá. Ok. Ok. So, we're going to table the item, and if you bring it back today, so we're going to be able to send it up, and you don't have, we don't have to delay the process down here. Si tú lo buscas hoy, nosotros podemos mandarlo, y no tenemos que dejarlo aquí, a, aquí abajo. Eh, ok. La copia de la última inspección, ¿no? De la última inspección. Ok. Okay, so can I get a motion to table document 2321? So Second. All those in favor? Aye. The ayes have. Vaya, búsquelo y vuelva. Está bien. Thank you. And lo más pronto que usted pueda. Okay. Document 32217 is Iglesia Ministro Visión Cristiana request to be allowed to do the community service to keep our city of Lawrence clean. It has been put in the agenda by Cesar Matuel, senior pastor, and Ovid Matuel, church secretary. Members of the council, I'm honored to be here today. My name is Ovid Matul. I'm here representing Ministerios Visión Cristiana, located at 29 South Canal Street, and I'm here with some members from our church. We are, our proposal this evening is that we be allowed to do a community service day here in the city. Our date that we have in mind is October 21st. It's a Saturday, Saturday morning. Uh, right now we have about 150 to 200 volunteers, uh, teenagers, students, um, young adults and adults that are willing to come out and clean the streets. We want to go to the, to the main street. We want to go to parks basically any common area here in Lawrence. However, our request, our proposal to you is we need, we need supplies such as trash bags, uh, brooms, shovels, and whatever, whatever else be needed to, to clean the street. 
Also, we would like the DPW to support us. And we're gonna go around the, around the, in, uh, the streets, clean everything, and leave everything in bags at the corners of the streets. And then the DPW trucks or whoever the, whoever's in charge of trash removal can come by and pick up all that trash. Um, again, like I said, we, we are a, a family-focused church. We believe that families are the main core of society. And we love the city, and all we want to do is just keep it clean. Thank you. That sounds like a fantastic plan. Have you been able to get in touch with DPW and present your plan? I haven't. I called last time, but they, they transferred me, and they told me that I needed to come here first and, and, get, and submit my letter, which, which is what you guys got, and, um, <clears throat> and then go back to them. I thought I saw the DPW no, director the, here. The DPW um, director, director is here. here. <laughs> so here, he's the person that you didn't get in touch. <laughs> nice See how small words are? So he's the person that you need to get in touch. Okay. So Mr. Harkis, if you can uh, come up to the podium and if that is something that um, we want to make sure that we're not going to say yes and whenever I go back to you, you say, no, this is not something that the city is going to be able to do. Good evening, Council. Carlos Hack is Director of Public Works. We're certainly more than welcome to support this initiative um, on behalf of um, Iglesia. Um, certainly, we welcome any opportunity that we have to assist the Department of Keeping our city clean. Uh, we assist. Uh, there are many volunteer, both from a community-oriented perspective or faith-based perspective that come to my department on a day-to-day -day basis or requesting our assistance, we're more than welcome to accommodate this request to them. Um, if you have any question, this is your opportunity just to ask all the questions and all the requests that you have since in public, he say yes. By the way, you say that you were requesting the uh, brooms and other stuff? Or yeah, you uh, supplies and material. We have volunteers. We have uh, we can we can <coughs> supply the labor, but we need uh, materials. We need trash bags. Uh, it's it's hard to give you an exact number about how many trash bags we would need, but I would say maybe at least 200 trash bags. We, we would need at least maybe at, at least 80 brooms, some shovels to pick up uh, if there's a lot of trash or a lot of things that we can't pick up with our hands. Usually, uh, usually what happens with, um, in a cleanup operation, uh, the, the, the organization that support, that support every, or oh, most of the cleanup here in the city of Lawrence is uh, Groundwork Lawrence. They have all the materials, uh, you know, a lot of material from the Earth Day or, or the um, Speaker Cleanup River. Uh, the Speaker River Cleanup and usually they are they are the one that provide that that type of support. Uh, if you get in touch with them, they are more than welcome and happy to provide uh, to provide you with uh, with that uh, material that you might need. What's well, I'm sorry. What's the department's name? Who are they? Uh, the organization, the non-for-profit organization, Groundwork Lawrence. Groundwork, Groundwork. Lawrence. Okay. Um, how do I find their contact information? But I get it through DPW. Yes, yes. You, you can get it through. Mm -hmm. So, what, uh, if so I was you, I'm sorry. If I was you, I wouldn't lose this opportunity and grab all the information that you need with the DPW director. And I don't lose any time. I just come and grab him in public and say, "Listen, this is what I need." I'll jump on um, him. The city so. next is, and and just to kind of exchange information now. Okay. Yeah. So uh, get in touch with the groundwork. They are. They very. Um, they're very happy when people do this, and they they have the material. Okay. And, uh, and DPW is there that can help you with that. Uh, uh, in terms of picking up the trash once you guys uh, clean it. Okay. But, um, Thank you. Make sure you get in touch with Groundwork Lawrence. They have a lot of materials that they need in terms okay. of gloves, everything. They do the biggest, uh, two of the biggest cleanup in the city of Lawrence, um, which is the uh, the, the Speaker River cleanup and the uh, uh, Earth Day. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Madam Chair, motion to send it up with a favorable recommendation. Second. The um, motion has been made properly. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. You also need to come back to our next city council meeting, which is going to be next Tuesday at 7 o'clock. And thank you for taking your time, you and all your members, to help our community. 
Um, if we can have more that can be volunteer and do that, um, I promise and I'm going to make that promise in public that I want to be part of that. Thank you. And by the way, if you want to find a very good spot where you need to clean, let me know. I'll help you with that. Okay. No, yes, Councillor Rodriguez, I know that you want to grab it all to District D, <laughs> but if I'm volunteer, it's because I'm also new in District B. <laughs> all right, thank and, um, you. I, I help you. Don't worry about it. So, yeah, um, thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. Can you talk now? Or? <laughs> there you go. Yes. I like to work with people, they follow on direction. Good, good. <laughs> so the next document is um, document 30117, Lawrence Historical Commission <laughs> request that the North Common National Historical District be properly referred to as the Common. Is anyone represent the historical? No? Can I get a motion to table document 30117? So uh, second the motion with discussion. Second with discussion. Also, table, no discussion. I mean, to, to no, table. Just, just, just to table. explanation, I'm sorry. Just, okay. just an explanation. Okay. Uh, Jonas, Jonas uh, the uh, sponsor of this, uh, had surgery. Uh, so we may want to send uh, Correspond. correspondence to the other members of the commission to send somebody. Um, I think he wants to be present. Uh, we're just gonna table and we can send recommendation to him if he was like that. Mm -hmm. um, because we have conversation in the past and he really wants to be present. The problem is that he has surgery. Yeah, but he he went till, he, that can weigh in until he gets better. Okay. okay, sure. So motion to table document 301. This already second. <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Document 302, 17 is Salom. And I, I request to parking space for business access near 434 Prosper Street. It has been put in the agenda by Marisol Cueto and Mariluz de Jesus. Are any members present here? Because I'm not quite understand what they are looking for. So if they're not present, um, can I get a motion to take a to table document so 302? Mm -hmm. Yeah, one more table. Can I hear a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. The ayes have it. Document 303 is Everest Street Safety Concern. It has been put in the agenda by Frederick Diaz. Mr. Diaz. Yes. Good evening, Council. Uh, Frederick Diaz, um, 19 Bailey Street, South Lawrence, District E. Um, I brought the item to the agenda, I mean, to the City Council because um, the petitioners are right here, like Jim, put the request like a year and a half ago for some street bumps or humps to be placed on every street because people are flying. They don't stop on stop signs there. So I think the best idea is to put some removable, uh, removable uh, street bumps or humps <clears throat> that you can take off actually in the winter or can, it can be moved anytime or leave there. That will make people stop. Um, also, it'll be awesome if, if the presence of a police will be there, because if you actually go to that street, um, they don't stop, and they go like 40, 50. So he put the request uh, like a year and a half ago. Nothing was done at all, and um, I was, while I was walking on the street, I met him, and he told me what the issue was, and I helping him and the neighbors around the neighborhood um, to get this done, please. Um, it'll be great if you guys take that in consideration and take a look at what's going on. Um, this guy spinning wheels is, is, is horrible. Someone's going to get hit. Something's going to happen in that corner. So that's what I brought in. Um, thank you. Madam uh, Chair. Councillor Maldonado. I think we should send this document to uh, Officer Scanlon so that he can speak to the people that are being affected and uh, determine what would be the best option to... Uh, to correct the uh, speeding problem? Yes. Second the motion. I mean, I made that informal uh, motion. I, I believe the applicants um, want to speak. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm Jim Madolo. I live at 100 Ebbett Street at the corner of Belknap and Lawrence. And I've lived there since 1959. And 
Through the years, Everett Street has been made into a cut through from South Broadway to Route 93. Now you have to understand on Everett Street is now the Riverfront State Park that has you know, children's playground, has the tennis court, uh, basketball court, plus it has the boat ramp. And in addition to the state boat ramp on the other end, um, there's only one stop sign on Everett Street, and that's at my corner. Unfortunately, most in individuals mm -hmm. do not stop. They think the word stop means slow till others pass. So we've come up with a, a list of recommendations, and it doesn't mean each one could be adopted. Possibly add additional stop signs on Everett Street, one at the corner of Carlton and Everett. <coughs> I understand there's some concern about the installation of a stop sign there because there's a slight hill there, but there's other hills in the city that has stop signs on a hill. And my street in the winter time is well taken care of by the plows and the sand trucks. It's mostly bare when there's a snowstorm. So if additional stop signs could be installed, that would be great. Maybe we could put, possibly do the installation of the stop sign first. If that doesn't work, maybe we can go with the speed bump or speed hump issue, okay? Another recommendation would be if the speed limit could be reduced to possibly 25 or 20 miles an hour. Currently, it's 30 miles an hour, and I believe that's citywide, except when there's a school by, nearby. Part of the street is within two blocks of the Weatherby School. And again, the state park is there, and that state park is utilized by hundreds on a daily basis. Um, during the past year, there has been four accidents at my corner. One car, one car drove through my fence. Another car drove through my neighbor's fence diagonally across from me. Two weeks ago, someone plowed through the stop sign, hit the telephone pole on the opposite side of the road, <laughs> um, and then there was another accident. And I met a gentleman, Everett Street, is connected to Rose Street. I met a gentleman the other morning, because um, I take care of a couple of triangles on my street. Um, I understand there's been four accidents on Rose Street, because they come down Shattuck, swing around to Rose Street, onto Everett Street, and it's a straight line. They step on that gas. They don't care if there's kids you know, nearby, or anyone's walking across the street. So over the years, it's just getting worse and worse, and I'm, I'm asking for something to be done. Councilor <laughs> Rodriguez. Do you notice that we're spending $400,000 from the uh, full street ordinance on that street? What, excuse me? Do you notice that we're spending $400,000 from the full street ordinance that we get from the state on that street, on that location around there? And there is traffic calming, and there is a lot of improvement there. Right, I believe that was spent on that triangle. Yeah, it was spent on that section of that street. And, and, and I just wanted to be fair, because it's been a lot of uh, talking about a lot of negative, but I mean, there is some investment there. Right, right. and you know, and that's still in a working process. They're still finishing that off, but this the traffic calming that they put in, there is a, you know, the bump up on the, uh, on the curving for the pedestrian to be able to go from one side to another side, which is going to help a lot in terms of reducing the speed. <coughs> and there is a lot of other um, right. improvement but around After, there after well. they pass that speed, um, that, that bump out, mm -hmm. they step on the gas. Up to when they come to my house, they slow down to the stop sign. Most of them don't stop. And because the issue that I'm seeing here is the, it's an enforcement issue. Because there is still four way a stop sign on that, on that road, mm -hmm. less than a thousand feet from that traffic coming, and the flashing lights. 
So it's more of an enforcement issue there. But what I'm asking, I think it is and an enforcement. If we put, if we and, put and, a speed bumps on everything, I mean, it's going to be like, And, you know, and occasionally the police do enforce it. They usually nab one person, but then they leave. Madam Chair, um, again, my suggestion is that we send it to Officer Scanlon so that he can meet with the gentleman, look at alternatives to see what can be done, uh, and I'm, I'm sure that Officer Scanlon can come back with some recommendations right. and suggestions on how we and can improve we, the situation. And, and we also have tractor trailers that are coming down the street yeah. too. Uh, so. I, yeah, I agree with Council Maldonado. The proper I'm way sorry. is just to, um, if you can pass his, uh, your information to um, Cassandra, she's going to be taking your number. So whenever we send a recommendation to Officer Scanlon, he's going to get in touch with you. And you can explain to him, um, you know, and he can come up with some recommendations. Okay. If, okay. Yeah. So you don't have to give it in public. We just... We're just going to call for a motion. Yeah, we're just going to call the motion. So the motion is motion to send. Motion is to send it to Officer of Scanlon. Second. To, uh, for recommendation and to get in touch with the applicants. Mm -hmm. If you can pass your information, sir. Is it possible I could piggyback on Jim's testimony uh, just for a minute? Does he refer to me uh, concerning the corner at Rose Street? I'll just take 60 seconds if that's OK. Uh, sure. Yes. Uh, Tom Coughlin, 44 Rose Street in Lawrence. Thank you, sir. The um, four accidents that he's referring to were cars that came down Everett Street, typically at a high rate of speed, failed to negotiate the turn. It's a, a fairly gradual turn onto Rose Street, about 45 degrees, but they're going so fast that they end up on two wheels. One took out my niece's uh, car, which was driven into several other automobiles. Another one snapped off a telephone pole, ricocheted off the pole, T-boned a taxi up at the corner of Everett Street, ricocheted off that, went into a driveway on, uh, on uh, Newton Street, rather, excuse me, hit two more cars driving one of those cars up the steps of a second story deck. I've, these never made the police notes for whatever reason, but the, the uh, fire department who responded that night said the guy had to have been doing 70 or 80 miles an hour. It, it took them 45 minutes to uh, extricate the cab driver. Uh, people routinely come around the turn uh, head into, the, into or towards the woods, try to overcorrect, and end up uh, either hitting parked cars or telephone <coughs> poles. And a, a, a suggested remedy, which I don't know if we can amend Jim's or add it to Jim's recommendation, would be a simple uh, uh, yellow triangular or a diamond-shaped sign that simply shows the curve, just a simple signage issue for that corner, because people think that the road goes straight there, and exacerbating that is the fact that there's a pole line overhead wires that the electric company just trimmed out, and as you're coming down the street, it gives the illusion that the street keeps going straight. And there have been uh, four major accidents there just in the last 18 months. So to me, it would be an issue of signage uh, rather than enforcement. Do you, have, uh, do you have those recommendations here, sir? Do I have what? Do you have that on, as no, part of I the do package? Not. I do, do not. Do you think that you can write it down and put it as part of the recommendation for the record? OK, certainly. And I'd also like to thank Councillor Abdu and uh, Councillor Diaz and the mayor and everybody for the improvements that they have made down there at the uh, uh, DCR Park. It's, uh, it's beautiful. Nice work. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, yeah, so, yeah, so we're just going to be calling for a motion. And um, when Officer Scanlon is ready just to revisit the area, he's going to get in touch. 
So the motion is to, uh, has been made properly. Second, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have a motion to table document. So moved. 303. Second. All those in favor? Aye. The ayes have it. Document 30417 is a one way Sunset Avenue from Saratoga Street to Lawrence Street, direction TBD. Has been put on agenda by Councilor President Basque. <coughs> Can I get a motion to, to send this item to uh, Offices Callum for recommendation? So move. Um, can we include the city engineer? And also to the city engineer. Motion has been made. Second. Properly second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have a motion to table so document move. 304. Second. All those in favor? Aye. The ayes have it. Document 30617 is a handicap parking 12 Park Street has been put in the agenda by Gloria E. Candelario. Um, can I get also get a motion to send to Office Scallon? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. The ayes have a motion to table document 306. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. The ayes have it. Document 30817, Lauren Historical Commission, a request to recognize authority of the commission to name or rename site between jurisdiction and has been put in the agenda by Donna Bertolino, secretary. Is glory here. So I think Madam Chair, I make the motion that we table it and send uh, correspondence to uh, Donna Bertolino. Mo I second the motion. Motion has been made properly. Second, all those in favor? Aye. The ayes have it. Document 310 is a one git skate shop. Request to use the component common for a big block jam on October 22nd. 2017 rain day October 29 from noon to 4:30 and has been put in the agenda by Albert Ferreira. Is Albert here? Okay. Can Motion we? to table and to send correspondence to Albert Ferreira. Second. Here at the next meeting. Motion has been made. Properly second. All those in favor? Aye. The ayes have it. Um, I Can I get a motion to take document 4817 out of table? So move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Document 4817 is a Devon Charn Street closing a portion. And um, I think we have Councilor Abdul, who is here to speak on behalf of the items. And also we have um, quite a few residents. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you, Chairman, uh, Chairwoman and Councillors. Um, so I would note this is an item as you're familiar with from uh, last winter and it was completed business. To create a dead end where we had once created a one way uh, to deal with Hale Street and the narrowness of it and uh, lack of um, engineering that went into this Hale Street to Devonshire. So what was determined by this body was to create a dead end to then Hale Street. And as we had discussed here, the placement of the barriers were to be placed at the end of Hale but up Devonshire, giving adequate space for cars to turn around that may errantly have gone down Hale, which now is signed. Um, and also put a place that, for the DPW to place snow in the winter. Um, sometime, I would suggest it was probably the end of July, three Jersey barriers were placed at the end of Hale Street, directly at the end of Hale Street, not allowing a place for the snow to be put, not allowing a place for the three-point turns to occur, and therefore you had cars backing up Hale Street and turning around on people's lawns, people's properties, people's driveways. Um, this was uh, poor execution, um, and so what has occurred subsequently, I've met with the neighbors <coughs> again on Hale and Devonshire. Um, as you know, this was a very thoughtful process. There's been some that suggested otherwise. Um, 
we had a public hearing where all were invited and um, a few lit drops back on January 4th. Uh, and then we had the regular process that this council executes the hearing here at ordinance, which actually occurred twice. And then we have the public hearing at the full council level. So with that said, we've actually, I've actually spoken to um, the parties involved and um, I have also spoken to the DPW who's moved the barriers since Ms. Lopez submitted her letter. Uh, the barriers aren't quite where we want them as a council. Um, I've spoken to the Public Works Department. We will get them moved further, um, further up Devonshire so that there is room for the vehicles to do their three-point turn. It is not an optimal solution, but to visit it, you know that a 12-foot wide, 15-foot wide street is not optimal. But there, there will be place, there's a, there is a place now for cars to do the three-point turn in the snow, but it's not where we had discussed. So that barrier is if you visit it, they need to go further up Devonshire mm -hmm. so that vehicles on hail can properly execute three-point turn, stay off people's private property, and for the city, come snow, put it there. What's plowed the end of hail, and then also at Adams. Um, I would also note that what led to um, some consternation was signage wasn't immediately put up. So um, that was about four or five weeks ago. Two dead end signs were placed at the end of Hale Street. Two dead end signs were placed at the end of Adams Street. And then again, dead end signs placed at the end of Devonshire Street. So uh, that seems to be uh, well received by the proponents and uh, those that have not been fully supportive, if you will, um, seem open-minded to um, seeing how this progresses. See how the winter goes as far as snow placement and see how it goes as far as the cars doing three-point turns. But I would conclude my comments by um, letting you know that the barriers still aren't where we want them, or where we had decided as a council. Um, I would suggest to you they probably need to be moved about another 25, 20 to 25 feet south on Devonshire uh, to a point just north of the Jake's property, which is the only one in Devonshire, um, but north of the driveway of the hail facing um, home on the corner. I believe the last name is Martellucci. So um, this is something that uh, I've been in contact with the DPW, they put the signage up, and now it's placement of those barriers where they're supposed to be. Uh, that has not occurred yet, um, but it is on the to-do list. With that, I thank you for your time, and I'll turn it over to the, anyone else here. Thank you. you. Councillor Maldonado. Is Maria, Maria Lopez here? No, I don't think that she's, she's here. She's not here? No, she's not here, but... Uh, 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 Councillor Abdu. Councillor Abdu. Have you, have you communicated with Maria? Yes. yes. You have? Yes. Uh, do you find that she's happy with the uh, new arrangement? Uh, that, uh, I would not use the word happy, she, but she is, she is satisfied that okay. we're listening. She's satisfied that, um, that the barriers where they were was wrong. Okay. And um, so I, I think we have a level of, of trust amongst all right now. Um, I would note there are um, letters, more letters for the record I'll submit later. Um, but Ms. Lopez, um, I believe, is content. Um, mm -hmm. And I have not heard any negative um, from any other folks. I, yeah, I, I understand that this is going to be the first winter yes. where this is going to take place. So obviously we need to wait and see how uh, the snow, uh, Where it pushing goes. the snow is going to affect and then uh, maybe revisit this situation if the case is that, that, uh, that the snow banks <coughs> may become too big to the point where it will create, again, the situation of people having to, uh, having to turn around, making U-turns in her driveway. Uh, you also mentioned that the signs are already up, right? The signs are now up. They okay, were not so, up immediately. So it says that it's a dead end. It says it's a dead end. Two signs, end of Hale Street, two, uh, two signs, end of Devonshire. Okay. Excuse me. Two at Hale, two at Adams, one at Devonshire. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. 
So it seems to me that what we should do is wait and see what happens in the winter. Hopefully, uh, things will work out. And subsequent to this being filed, we've spoken, and that's, mm -hmm. that was um, generally agreed upon. We'll see how it goes, and then if, if it is not optimal, then we'll revisit it in March, April, and mm -hmm. rearrange it for the following year. Okay, um, what will be the motion? Motion to oh. table. Oh. Oh. Councillor Rodriguez. Sorry. No, no, that's it. Okay. Go, go, go ahead. Oh, wait, I have two questions for that. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. For the director. DPW. Um, director, once, um, thank you for being here and thank you for taking the podium. Um, once the, the, the placement of the barrier was done, and uh, eventually uh, put it in the right place. Do you think that this is going to be an optimal solution for you to do your uh, operation in terms of snow removal? I don't think it will be a problem for us. Um, obviously, it's all going to depend on the amount of snow that we get on any given um, season. Assuming, assuming that we have typical amount of snow, uh, probably 80 inches or during the year. So I guess I'd put this as an example of some dead roadways that we have in the city where we have similar concerns where um, certain residents are concerned about when we pile snow at the end of the street, it starts encroaching slowly on the driveway. So depending on the type of snow season we get, whether we get a, a lot of accumulation, we do sometimes take the loader out there and start removing some of that snow off the site to allow the person to be able to go in the driveway. So should that become an issue at this particular location, we'll implement the same operation or we'll send a loader down there, remove the snow and haul it off of the site. But it's all gonna depend on how the season is gonna play out. If a lot of the snow, if you get a four inch, 12 inch, 18 inch storm and it melts, and it, you kinda of just have to play it by ear depending on how the season plays out. Because uh, what I'm seeing here is that we probably have issues in terms of hewing out the snow out of there because we have wetlands right next to it, and we cannot throw the snow there. Well, we wouldn't be dumping it in the wetland. We would remove it off-site. So we're going to have to fuel it out with trucks? Yes, we will haul it out of, the, out of that location. It wouldn't, be, it wouldn't be any different, as I mentioned, as all the locations around the city where we have a dead-end road uh, where we have a lot of uh, snow accumulating at the end of the road. If it be, starts becoming a public safety issue towards driveway or people traveling there, we will haul that out of that location. So it will be the same operation as we would have it in <coughs> other locations throughout the city. So and it will, we're going to have extra cost for that type of operation because it wasn't there before, right? Quite possibly, yes. Yes, okay. Um, in terms of uh, the uses of the, uh, of the road, perhaps uh, going from one point, point A to point B, how we used to be, have you have any complaint in terms of perhaps people passing by or uh, the mail, uh, UPS or FedEx or any type of complaint like that. Because we have, before used to be open, now it's closed and it's, it, it didn't meant to be closed. Yes, but at the same time, um, this is a very low volume road. It was a local roadway that was used mainly by the local residents in that neighborhood. I think we may be talking about no more than 10 houses that that are connected to that roadway, um, at least on the back end of Devonshire, if I'm not mistaken. So there wouldn't be that much traffic at the beginning there. So whatever complaints we received was towards the beginning when we implemented the change, people trying to get accommodated to the new operations of the roadway. But after that, we haven't received any more complaints for people not being able to get through. So there is access to that, um, to that portion of the road from both sides. So it's not like you're completely blocking it off. We don't have any average daily traffic for this, right? <coughs> no, but uh, in my professional opinion, you're probably looking at less than 100 vehicles per day. Yeah, I'm asking you all these questions because at the end of the day, those are, those are questions that um, we probably didn't have at the beginning because we didn't have the, the dead end. So and now with that we're revisiting it, I would like you know, to have those answers and, and probably um, understand how that the situation is going to be eventually. But thank you for taking the podium and, uh, and, and uh, I highly appreciate your, your information. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Okay, so the motion is to send 
Uh, Councilor Maldonado made the motion is to send it with. Co respondence to Maria? To, to Maria? Co respondence to Maria? Yes, but we send it back here in. Um, we met with Maria. Yeah, we, we talk if we ke if we keep a table, if pending, we keep a table pending recommendations, pending what, no, no, pending, no, no. What, pending what's going to happen in the winter. What That's do you what mean keep? For. Okay, so we're just going to leave the item table here. Yeah, table, and until we see what happens in the winter, we examine the situation. So basically, what you're saying is we're just going to leave the document and the agenda. So if we mm -hmm. need to come back and revisit after the winter, mm -hmm. just to see what's going to happen. Yeah, because the, the DPW <laughs> may may face problems in the winter and may come back with some additional recommendations. Uh, but the council for District um, E, he has said very clear that if he's, they need to revisit or they need to do something after the winter, they're going to do it. Is that something that... I just leave the, let's leave the item here and then we can just, review it. We don't need to take any action. No, uh, no. The virus is there. So uh, the motion is to table, mm -hmm. to revisit after the winter? Mm-hmm. Motion second the motion. Motion has been made, properly second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Thank you all for being here. Um, is any other items that... Um, Madam Chair, there is, a, uh, there is a correspondence from the uh, Veterans Services regarding one of the items. Item 299-17. Two ninety one. Ninety nine. Dedication of Railroad Street. Ever since intersection one of Army Veteran Mariano Tavares. Okay. It's in the table item, right? Mm -hmm. Can I get a motion to take document two ninety nine seventeen out so, of table? So move. Can I hear a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. The ayes have it. Document 299 is a dedication of Rail Roar Street and Haver Street intersection in honor of RB veteran PCF Marino Torres Miranda and has been put in the agenda by Councillor Vasquez. So, what do we have? Madam Chair, there is a letter. Uh, if maybe if you allow me to read it and then we can ask. Uh, uh, Mr. Melendez. I think that we should, we should discuss with both huh? parties before we read it. I'm sorry? I think that we should discuss this with both parties because we, before we read the mm -hmm. recommendation and that way they can uh, agree upon something. Okay. 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 So. I send correspondent to both uh, Councillor Vasquez and uh, proposed there uh, and, and, uh, and yeah, Jaime Melendez. And Jaime Melendez. And yeah. Jaime Melendez. Mm -hmm. They're not here. So I would like to make a motion to send correspond to uh, the order of the uh, of the item, Council President Vasquez, and uh, and the director of um, of that um, of office and uh, office of veteran services, uh, Jaime Melendez, to be present for the next uh, ordinance committee meeting. And also to table. I second the motion. Motion to table item 299, 17. Second. So all those in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Do you have any items that we need to? Two sixty-eight. Two sixty-eight. That was in the folder. We sent a letter in a couple of weeks ago asking that this be taken off the table. Um, it was up at the planning board for mm -hmm. review. Mm -hmm. uh, the changing the city zoning ordinance. Okay. Can I get a motion to take document 26817? Second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. The Aye. ayes have it. Document 26817 is Office of Planning of Development request to propose <laughs> amendments to Lawrence zoning ordinance permitting solar energy. And that has been put in the agenda by uh, Dan McCarthy, Lynn, and Use Planner. Yeah, I don't know if uh, I, we sent a copy of the, the um, decision over, um, the recommendation. I have any copies of the statute itself. Yeah. Thank you. Earlier tonight, uh, Mr. P. Blanchett was down here speaking on the, um, uh, the stretch code as part of um, 
uh, uh, the order of the sections for the uh, requirements to for the city to meet the green community standards. One of the other five requirements is that the city has to adopt um, as part of its zoning ordinance um, new code that promotes sustainable renewable energy um, as a matter of uh, right. The, uh, under the Dover Amendment, solar energy has always been protected um, as, a, as a use. Uh, we've been permitting it for decades now, but it's been recently uh, pointed out to us that it's not contained in our zoning ordinance. The, um, this is the draft. Uh, we had a committee that worked on this. Uh, we had some help from the state Department of Energy had made some suggestions, and we created a new ordinance. Uh, as you can see, um, solar panels are allowed on every building by right as a matter of law. Then we treated the solar energy that's going to be freestanding solar panels at, um, in uh, photo, uh, the photovoltaic uh, cells um, with some conditions that they're not permitted in some areas. They're not going to be uh, permitted um, in, in uh, residential districts without special permits. They're allowed in industrial districts, but with certain setbacks. And it's a minimum size requirement if you're going to have uh, a, a photo uh, cell, solar array in a business district. So those conditions are all um, in there. And we also have the requirements for the um, site plan approval um, section of that. So there will be four changes to the zoning ordinance in substance. Um, right now, the way solar energy is treated, it's, it's pretty much permitted um, across the board. Um, the suggestions that we made were all reviewed by the state, and they thought they were adequate. They thought they protected the citizens. People who live in residential neighborhoods don't want a field of photo uh, arrays going up in their backyard because uh, somebody has a vacant lot uh, or, they don't, or something of that nature. So we did put that in there to protect the residential neighborhoods to protect our open space and our conservation area. Okay. Well, and, it, and this was also unanimously approved. Mr. McCarthy, uh, we have seen uh, a lot of solar panels being installed on the roofs now. Yes. Uh, do they have to come for a permit? Right. They, they never have. If the, the state has a section of the zoning, there's a state zoning law, which is commonly called the Dover Amendment. It says that certain uses are protected, churches, daycare centers, and solar energy is one of those. That the, the state and federal government has decided that solar energy is a use that they want protected, and so they made it so that cities cannot preclude solar energy from, uh, by, by using the zoning ordinance, but we can manage it in a, in, a, in a limited amount. So the way we treated it in this was that if it's a photo cells that are gonna go on a building, they're, they will be, they're permitted by right, so you don't have to get a special permit for it. If you're gonna have a field of photo cells um, for, for commercial use, um, it's permitted by right in industrial districts. It requires a special permit in uh, business districts and it is um, not permitted in, in, in our open space and conservation area. Okay, so, so what you are saying is that right now, all the uh, cell panels that are, are being installed in different properties around the city, uh, they don't come for a permit to in the inspection of service? As far as I know, all they need is a building permit. Now, these new regulations are going to require them to, to do that. Am I correct? They're going to still have to get building permits to put them on a roof. Okay. It's part of any part of, any part of an addition to a house, a construction to a house, should require a building permit. Okay. Obviously, there is a concern of structural integrity. In, yeah. Correct. One of the conditions you'll see in there is that the, the one condition we put on for roof-mounted uh, panels is that the building commissioner or the building inspector who's handling that mm -hmm. permit can require an engineering letter um, to say that the, uh, the building that the, it's going to go on is structurally sound and can handle the weight. So that's the one limitation, and we did that for safety purposes. So the building commissioner can, can say, well, you, you want to put them on there. I have some concerns about the weight bearing of your mm -hmm. building, 
bring me an engineering letter to show that you can hold that weight and then we'll give you the permit. But other than that, we're not going to obstruct it and that's what the state wants. Okay. Good. No more questions. Yeah, sure. Please. Uh, is the zoning board review this? No, the planning board did. The planning, planning, the planning board did. They approved it. And that was the recommendation they sent to us? There was a recommendation. It was sent to everybody on the committee uh, about three weeks ago. Can we get the minutes for the for that meeting? I can. I can provide those to you. Yes. Yes, I can. Um, I would like to send uh, this item to the full council with a federal recommendation pending in the minutes of the of that minute uh, of, of that meeting and uh, and confirm the information because this is to me this is just a right yes. now it's a piece of paper. I'll have those documents sent up for the next meeting. At that meeting, I'll be requesting a public hearing. It does have to have a public hearing because okay, it's changing the zoning ordinance. Public so I believe we'll be asking for it, a vote on the 17th of October. The th I think that's the third, the 17th or well, the third, the second meeting of October. Yes, so we'd like to so I'll have to the full council pending the documentation. To order a public hearing. To order a public hearing, yes. Yeah. Pending the documentation of uh, the meeting or the minutes or the recommendation, the official recommendation from the planning department. I second the motion. Um, all those in favor? Aye. The ayes have it. Thank you, Mr. McCarthy. Thank you. So can you get a motion uh, to, to get item um, 264? Six, no, 65. I have this first. Um, <laughs> can I get a motion to take document 26417 out of um, table? So move. Aye. All those in favor, aye. The, aye. Um, okay, document 26417 is proposed ordinance to regulate mobile food vendor. Um, this one here. 264. Good evening, counselors. Good evening. Hi. Uh, Brian Corrigan, assistant city attorney. <coughs> it's been some time since we, uh, we last addressed this, this issue, uh, maybe, maybe two months. Um, but just to refresh uh, uh, Council's memory, uh, this is a new uh, proposed ordinance to regulate um, mobile food vendors, uh, also referred to as food trucks. Uh, we had a, a fairly lengthy discussion at the last time we, um, we addressed this issue, and I think there were three issues um, that came out of that uh, discussion and you asked me to, uh, to do some research and come back with some answers. Um, the, uh, first of all, I want to uh, uh, pass around a, uh, a slightly revised uh, proposed ordinance. And I've highlighted the uh, revisions on pages uh, four and five. The issue that's addressed with these revisions, I believe, was raised by um, Councilor Rodriguez, and that was whether we need to have a special um, mobile food vendor committee uh, to review uh, appeals and challenges uh, to you know, uh, adverse action uh, by the city. And so what I've done here, basically, is I've made that section optional. Uh, the establishment of a mobile food vendor committee. You could decide whether you want that or not. The alternative to having a mobile food vendor committee, which would be, would be comprised of, of various um, city employees from uh, the inspectional services department, fire department, police, mayor's office, uh, city attorneys, and so forth, is to have appeals come directly to the city council. So if that's the preference, uh, we could make the simple revision here uh, of deleting that proposed um, uh, section related to the committee and just have all appeals come directly to the city council. Um, so that's something you may decide tonight. You may want to send up uh, to, to the full council. I, I leave that to you. Um, another issue that was raised um, was uh, how, how many food trucks we have currently in existence. I think it was uh, Councilor Maldonado who raised the concern 
that we may want to have some limits on the number of licenses that we um, are going to issue. So I have another document that I'd like to pass around. And this is a list of um, mobile food vendors that was provided to me by um, um, our food inspector, Valda Miller. And basically what this is is a list of roughly 50 mobile food vendors, um, the majority of which are not uh, currently uh, licensed. The only ones that are licensed are the ones that have a designation in the first column. You see there a, a, a permit uh, permit number. Uh, and there are, of the 50 that are listed here, uh, I believe roughly 17 or 18 that are um, currently permitted. The other ones would be perhaps um, mobile food vendors who have come uh, before the city for permits at, at uh, earlier times who maybe did not renew or who were inactive. Or perhaps there may be a few who have been identified as food vendors but who have not come in to fill out the paperwork and are not permitted. So um, that's where we stand. So it appears we have about 17 or 18 uh, active mobile food vendors. Whether these people are, you know, regularly operating with food trucks or whether it may just be for a temporary, um, you know, festival or something along those lines, I can't say. But um, again, that was an issue that was raised, I believe, by Councilor Maldonado. If the idea is to try to limit the number um, you know, that's, that's something that, uh, you know, certainly we can, we can discuss. It, my, just from my own personal experience, I don't see too many food trucks out there um, in operation, um, although I will admit um, I'm not, not around, um, you know, every weekend into the late hours, into the early morning, um, which is, I think, time when some of these guys do come into operation. But nonetheless, if it's uh, mm -hmm. something you want to initially try to limit, uh, perhaps to maybe uh, 15 or 20, and then see where things go, if there's a real uh, you know, rush to um, you know, get into this business, we can always decide to, to add more. But I, but I leave that to the council, and I'd be happy to, to provide more info uh, if you want me to do some more research. Um, Councilor Rodriguez. Well, thank you for submitting this information. This is a lot of uh, info that we have to uh, review. Uh, I personally um, wasn't expecting this today before I get here. So I definitely gonna have, I would like to read it and go through and see any, uh, compared to the last one that we would, the current ordinance we have, and see the possible uh, uh, probably issues or probably benefit that we have from the, new, from the new ordinance. Thank you for submitting this, and I'm definitely gonna have to review this. Yes. Okay. Madam Chair. Yes. Um, I believe that we should put some restrictions on the maximum number of, of vendors, mobile vendors, uh, for a number of reasons. Number one, uh, more vendors don't pay taxes. I don't believe that they collect the 6.5 uh, 6 .5 meal tax, uh, which is a problem for us because we are losing, we are losing additional income. Uh, number two, they become, uh, they become a, a, a competition uh, for local restaurants in the area who are paying uh, taxes to the city. Uh, so it seems to me that, you know, again, we should restrict the numbers. Uh, I see a lot of them because obviously they normally are out at night between the hours of eight and probably two or three o'clock in the morning uh, on the weekends primarily. So, so there, there are a lot, a lot of them. Uh, so definitely I believe that we should consider uh, restricting the numbers. Uh, to what extent, how many, I don't know, but I think that's something that we should look into. Um, it sounds like a good idea since we're going to be reviewing the document that has been passed mm -hmm. on Definitely. tonight. That Definitely. is something just to give it a thought. Mm -hmm. um, 
and also yet just to take it or make any decision. So I think, you know, what we're going to do is just to table the document and just mm -hmm. to kind of digest all that information that has been passed on. And, and thank you for that input. Okay. Um, so motion to table document 264. So yep. uh, second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay, aye so. Motion to take item uh, to, 6517, yeah, go please. There. Can I get a motion to take document 6517 out of table? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Yeah, aye. Oh, not. you didn't move it. I didn't say that. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I thought you moved. I lost the page. 65. 65. I just have it with me. What did I do? What is that? Yeah, there is a recommendation here. Do you need for street? Uh, yes, Councillor Rodriguez. Uh, welcome back, um, Director Hackes. Uh, I can see that in one recommendation, you didn't, uh, you didn't, uh, you didn't agree with it, and another recommendation, the revised one, you agree with it because of uh, uh, the fact that is one way, uh, one way road. Yeah, I just want to clarify that, um, Councillor. So the initial request that was made um, when the review process took place, um, we rely on Mass uh, uh Just refer to the, lo the location that we're talking about. Oh, sorry, uh, Juniper Street. Uh, so the request is, um, the request came to my office to make a recommendation uh, to whether or not allow alternate parking on Juniper Street. Right now, there is no winter parking allowed on that street right now. The request came to my office to make a recommendation whether favorable or unfavorable. Uh, to uh, allow alternate parking on Juniper Street. The initial recommendation that went back to City Council dated August 29th recommended not to allow alternate parking. However, that recommendation was based on some flawed information that we had from MassDOT's database. Um, for some reason, MassDOT has Juniper Street listed as a two-way, uh, yes. when right now that street is operating as a one-way. Um, so the thresholds for the roadway width that we had established on the memor initial memorandum for 25 feet that was taken into consideration that would have been a two-way road. However, it's this being a one-way road, the 25-foot clearings on the road should be more than enough to allow alternate parking on both roadways. Um, I do want to point out that my lettuce memorandum, I did issue a caveat with that saying that as long as Juniper Street continues to operate as a one-way, this recommendation is valid. But if at that point, at some point in the future, um, Juniper Street will be changed to a two-way, then this will no longer be valid because that roadway width um, does not, it's not sufficient for a two-way right. lane to allow parking on both sides. Mm -hmm. For a one-way, it's okay, but not for a two-way. Yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, currently, uh, during off winter, there is parking allowed on Juniper. Yes. On one side or both sides? Both. On both sides. Both. Both sides. Oh. And There's no restriction for parking on the street during, in, in the off winter season. So, and how is that, uh, the traffic flow right now? We haven't got any complaints from it. <coughs> no, no issues? The only complaint that we've received is for the winter parking, but not during the summer. So, and it's 25, 25 feet? At its narrowest point. At this, and what about <coughs> the average point? About 26. 26 cent then? Yeah. Um, so, so each car on each, on each side is so about eight, eight to nine feet, right? So if you think of this uh, 12 foot lane, 12 foot lane uh, for the travel way and approximately seven to eight, um, split the difference between the 25 feet, that's about um, 13 feet. You split that between both sides, it should be more than enough. Taking into account that's only one side, it's a lot at the same time. So the parking is not allowed on both sides. It's alternate parking allowed. So one night it will be on one side of the road and the other night will be on the other side of the road. So it will give you more than enough clearings for us to allow to clear the roadway during the snow and ice events and also to allow the safe travel of the public. Yes, Carlos, but I mean, um, understanding the, the current ordinance for the winter ban and the, the, alternative tra uh, the alternative parking during the winter, there is a gap between I believe between 3 and 11, the cars are going to park on both sides. That is correct. So that's going to be a tremendous issue with only, with, when you have only 25 feet wide road uh, and you have cars parking on both sides during the winter because there is a gap on the current ordinance that allow them to, 
to park on both sides. So the restriction got to be more strict on that specific uh, road. If we're going to allow parking, um, that is correct. There is a gap in the current winter parking ordinance where um, winter parking ban is during specific time frames of the day. In this case, it being between 12 yeah. and 8 and 3 p.m. However, as you probably know, winter storms don't obey any specific time frame. So we could have a storm at 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, and let me ask a quick question. The, it's, it's between 11 to 3 p.m., but in reality, the ban is between 11 to 3, right? Yes, but in between reality, 12 a.m. and 3 p.m. Yes, So, but in reality, it's between 12 a.m. to 6 p.m., 6 a.m. So, I mean, we can't control, obviously, what people will do if they got to go to work and move out of the vehicle. So that's not something we can't control, unfortunately. Um, but obviously, the winter parking ordinance is a tool that we use to allow us to clear the snow during the, during the winter months. So, um, uh, my, my, it's, my concern is that eventually we're going to have a lot of, uh, a lot of problems on that, on that specific road. So if you recommend an, an alternative parking between a specific time that is not necessarily going um, align with the winter ban, uh, and then I most likely support this. Otherwise, if we just allow, if we just add this to the current ordinance, this, not, this is not going to work. Because we're going to have parking on both sides at one point between 6 a.m. probably to 11 p.m. Uh, and that's going to be a, a problem with cows down there. That is correct, but that's the same citywide. Same citywide, yes, but we are in this to, we are actually creating a problem if we add this road to that specific ordinance. If we create an ordinance for this road, saying perhaps alternative parking between hours that actually work, most likely I, were, I, I will I will support this. Otherwise, it's going to be like the current, uh, the current winter ban doesn't work. We're adding this road with 25 feet narrow, uh, 25 feet wide road. It, we're creating an issue. We're creating a problem. Well, we can definitely add this to an ordinance that we're creating today, and probably looking into all the road that might be able to accommodate to the new ordinance. What do you think? I, I think your concerns are better addressed more in a comprehensive manner, uh, I guess in other terms, more of a complete overhaul of the snow of the um, winter parking ordinance. Um, obviously, the framework that we have to work right now is the current ordinance that's established in the books. So the recommendation is based on that ordinance. Um, if we were to have a new ordinance with other restrictions on it for winter parking, that obviously there would be different recommendations based on whatever that ordinance may say. This recommendation is based on the court ordinance that we have right now, and it's no different than any of the other roadways that we have in the city. Um, so obviously, yes, you are correct. We do have that gap in time between 3 p.m. and 11.59 p.m., where technically there is no restriction for winter parking. Um, and if you have a snowstorm during that time frame, then we just have to manage it until the parking ban becomes into effect at 12.01 a.m. Carlos. It, because this is this is what I want to this is what I would like somehow to think about. If we looking at this road <coughs> and we're creating a specific restriction for that road, this is not any different than creating perhaps um, um, resident parking sticker. We create something specifically for that specific uh, road. So if that's the case here, and you know that between 6 a.m. in the morning, as reality, the enforcement of that ordinance is at 6 to 11 p.m., that's, that's going to create a, a problem there. And you know that. I mean, why don't we restrict this road as, as something that's going to work instead of just adding to a, to more to a problem? Because the current city, the current ordinance that we have for the winter plan it's a problem. I, I agree with you in that sense, but just take into account, um, we can't control when the storm arrives. Right. I mean, the storm doesn't follow a, a time frame. So in order for you to be able to establish an ordinance that will be able to accommodate that, it would have to be evaluated on a case-by-case -case basis, okay. not something that would be a blanket ban saying 
between 11.59 or 3 p.m. or whatever the time may be, you can't park there. We have to be more in a comprehensive manner, different than what is currently established. Okay, why don't we do this? Why don't we set Juniper, Juniper Street uh, restriction parking for that specific road between, let's say, uh, November 15 to April 30, or whatever the, the, uh, the winter ban go from one day to another day. We said on Juniper Street, on parking allowed only on the outside. For the entire year? During the entire winter. And when then we're going to have cars on one side only throughout the entire winter. And, and if it's snow or not snow, we're going, to have, we're, going to, we're going to have a simple solution. I would recommend against that just because it could create some confusion among the residents in the street. I mean, uh, right now the residents are used to a system where they know that on the outside of days they have to park on the outside of the street. On the even days they have to park on the even side of the street. If we were to create an ex exception for one specific street, the residents would have to be aware that they have to park on that side for the entire year. So it's an education type of thing that we can definitely try it out on this road because it's not quite big. What I want to, what I want to, you know, what I want to, I would like you to think of that way because somehow we're gonna have to fix the the, the winter ordinance. I mean, the traffic ban, the, the traffic ban during the winter, and this could be a, a perfect solution for it. Uh, one way road, allow parking on one side. And, and during the winter time. And you know, you make sure that any time that you pass by that road, you're gonna have enough space to, to, to clean. Um. To clean the snow. As I said, I would advise against that just because it, it creates a special set of rules for one street, mm -hmm. um, which I understand your, your point, I, I is that you're trying to, you're trying to try out city. something different to see if it works, I get that, but I'm concerned about other residents that may not understand that they may be used to one pattern on one road, they may want to seek relief on that road, may park on the other side of the road, we'll get a ticket, why do we create this? It, it could just create more confusion, and that's just my only concern. Yeah, um, Councillor Rodriguez, and thank you, um, Mr. Basque. I think it, um, since the Councillor President, it was the author of these um, items. Uh, whatever recommendation, I think he needs to be part of that. Once, because when we do something without checking with the resident, we create a cow. And we see resident now more than often because one, one, one thing, but the rest of the group is getting affected. Um, I think, it, you know, before we make those changes which make perfectly sense, we have to give the resident the opportunity to speak what is going to work for them. And if that would be a quick solution, or if this is something then still need to be working in a different area. Um, sorry, Councilor Maldonado, I know that you've been waiting, mm -hmm. uh, but I just wanna you know, yeah. give some feedback from because since this is very near and I have quite a few street that I've been having the same issue over the winter. So what we have to realize that um, we had been a city designed for a certain amount of cars. Now we have triple the amount of cars that we park in, in the winter and the summertime. And if you can drive into Lawrence, you don't know when it's winter and when it's summer versus on the cars that is parking in one street. Um, Councilor Maldonado. Uh, Carlos, um, when we started this conversation way back, uh, there were other requests like Bromfield Street uh, that they wanted also to be included. And we spoke about doing parking on only one side and you were going to, I remember uh, speaking to you and you mentioned that Somerville is dealing with that type of situation and that they, want, they have one, uh, only parking on one side uh, with narrow streets. And you were going to get back to us uh, to see how they, they handle the cleaning of the snow on that side where the, the, the cars were parking. 
Because I, I agree with, uh, with uh, Councillor Rodriguez. Uh, if we allow alternate parking on those narrow streets, it's going to create a big problem in the winter. Uh, there's going to be accumulation of snow, and then you're going to have to uh, spend a great more deal of time cleaning the whole thing and getting the cars out of there. So uh, I agree with him that, that, no we, that we should do parking on only one side and then deal with the situation of cleaning that side where they park, how we can probably put notices that are on such, uh, at such times the cars have to be removed from there so that the city will be able to clean up the snow. So one note on, on the Somerville, um, the way Somerville actually implemented a change on their snow and ice operations for this particular calendar year. Um, in years past, what they used to do is something similar to what Councilor Rodriguez just mentioned, is that mm -hmm. if the winter season started on an even year, all the vehicles were to be parked on the even side uh, for that entire year. Exactly. Um, exactly. This year they made a slight modification to that um, where they also included a snow and ice emergency situation, which essentially they said, that ban itself will only be in effect when there's a snow emergency established in the city. Exactly. So for example, the mayor or somebody will declare a snow emergency in the city and everybody in the city would have, for example, four hours or three hours to move their vehicles mm -hmm. into the correct side of the road to allow us to perform the clearance and then lift that a snow emergency possibly maybe 24, 48 hours after the storm, after everything's been being cleaned. So for them, it was a slight modification on the processes that they have done before. Um, it worked well for them. Uh, I do think that's something like that could be explored here in the city. Um, obviously, that would undertake a massive education campaign on behalf of the department and the entire city to educate everybody on that change because that, that is a very drastic change from what we're currently doing right now. Um, people are, right now are conditioned that as soon as uh, December 1st hit, they have to follow the alternate parking, whether it's snow or it doesn't. Uh, now, for you to make a change where this would only be applicable when it snows, obviously, we have to be uh, doing a very good job of outreaching to the residents, reaching out to them, and educating them, and say, listen, there's a snowstorm coming in four hours. You have to get your vehicles out of the way during that time. And that, the advantage of that to the residents is that they are not burdened with undue restrictions while it's not snowing, meaning that this ban um, is only in effect while it's snowing. The exactly. rest of the year, if there is no start in the end, then there is no ban. Exactly, yes. exactly. Yeah, I, I think we should look very carefully into that, especially not because there, there are several. We're going to get all the requests. Again, Brunsfield is still waiting for us for an answer, mm -hmm. and there are all the streets that are waiting for an answer. So it seems to me that if we do what Somerville is doing, uh, we, we're going to be safe on that. And we can include all the streets that have a limited uh, width uh, with the restriction that it would be parking on only one side. Uh, and, uh, and I think that would be better. Through you, Madam Chair. Yes. Councillor Rodriguez. And uh, Carlos, uh, Director Hackers. And the thing is, like, perhaps everybody wants their street to be alternately parking. That's going to be, that's eventually, but that's, what, what, that's what's going to happen. And, and if, we, if we start, you know, allowing, without having a plan in place, allowing street to go into the parking ban without, you know, having a, 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 a probably a, a second ordinance that, you know, for narrow road, that's going to become a big issue because, I mean, currently, everybody wants the street to be an alternative, an alternative parking. But everybody don't understand how the operation of the normal removal works. We have to have the spaces available, you know, in a specific width available, because there is a snow bank that's going to be up there all the time, and we have to have that space available. Otherwise, it can become an issue or very or very expensive to the city. Um, that's why I always. Um, think about this situation twice before you have my support because I know how the, there's no nice removal works and it could be a challenge for for any um, uh, you know any DPW uh, DPW department so on this I will definitely would like to see if we can try something new for this road perhaps parking on one side mm -hmm. um, yeah. the entire year. And, and trust me, yeah. people don't like it. 
Probably they said, you know what? No, I don't want it. But we, we, get, we have to do what's the best for the, for the city in, in terms of, you know, the operation of the snow removal. Everybody wants to be parked in an alternative way, but nobody wants to kind of like, you know, understand how that works. And eventually when snow happens, everybody wants the street clean. This is like a little, a little contradiction right there. So basically, we have to come up with something new. And like I said, this might be the starting point. It's confusing, probably. That was then gonna take more than a, more than more than a, probably a week or two weeks. Okay. Because it's gonna be the entire year. I mean, it's gonna be the entire winter. On parked on one side, on the outside, and that's it. Okay. Simple. So what are we gonna do with the item? <sighs> I think that we should wait for the uh, council president to come over. Since we and have uh, all that um, recommendation from the DPW, so a motion to tape the document. That's what you want. Yeah, second, uh, uh, yeah, no, no. Let, let me say something before, uh, okay. before we table. Um, I have a property on Juniper Street, so I'm uh, very familiar with Juniper. Uh, parking on both sides makes the street very narrow. Okay, even as it is now, it makes the street very narrow. It's very hard uh, when a car is coming by, go, going through. Uh, it's very hard for them to, to go across. Not only that, uh, the, uh, the uh, garbage pickup trucks, they have to come down backward against the one way in order to pick up the garbage on the left-hand side. <coughs> so, so it is it is obvious that, that we should not allow the, the two, two side parking. It should be only one side to, to minimize the problem. During the entire winter? During the entire winter, okay. yes. yes. We also can send it with uh, no recommendation to the full council and Councillor Basque can decide what he want to do at that level. Since uh, we don't need to keep this item in the, in the um, ordinance committee, so we're not waiting for any recommendation. So, you want to say well, we can we can send it up with, with a recommendation that yes. parking be give, be allowed only on one side during the right. winter time. Simple. And I will I will okay. make a motion that okay we, motion that, that, to uh, we do that. on one side based on the year. Based on the year. I would recommend that if we were to pursue that option, we, the signage will have to read or the ordinance would have to read um, that the restrictions should be placed depending on the calendar year of when the winter season starts, okay. meaning essentially for mm -hmm. this year would be an odd side ban because the winter season starts in 2017 and ends in 2018. Right. Okay. Um, so you... there is a language that we can use which is similar to what Somerville uses and it's a lot more descriptive and clear. Okay, can you send that language for the record? Yes. That way we can adapt it like that? All right, so the motion will be to send The motion will be to send it up with, uh, with the recommendation that parking be, be allowed during the winter on one side only. Which side? I think we're we need to, we're we, we need to look that. at the situation, how many dry waves there are. Well, let's, no, no. let's go with the uh, even, odd or even, depend on the year. But Carlos is gonna be sending the, the, that language. The language, oh, okay. yeah. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Okay, that's fine. so the motion has been made properly. Second, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Can I get a motion to take document 248, 17 out of table? 248. So move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have a document 248 17. Front street, no parking request to entering street. It has been put in the agenda by Mayor Dan Rivera and Councilor Abdul, referring to the city engineer in Path 3 and Pedro <laughs> Torres. Um, Councilor Abdul. Front Street, thank you. Thank you. Madam Chairwoman, Council Members, um, to my left and to your right are 80% or better of all the residents on Front Street without any reservation, unlike Devonshire. You have a quality of life issue 
that must be addressed. This has been a long standing issue. Councilor Brunell worked on it before me. I've worked on it. We've had multiple public meetings. We've had multiple community meetings. Very infrequently will you find a unanimous desire to sustain a quality of life. This street is now measured by a PE, an engineer of the city. The measurements have been submitted to this organization. You now have the actual measurements which are consistent with what I had reported previous. And that is a road that is very narrow. It's a one way. It's a cut through from South Broadway to Andover. And you have a situation where I believe you're looking at the photos of cars consistently parked in front of driveways, in front of, we have handicapped accessible people that need access to their neighbors, to the streets, to their own vehicles. And you have cars, you have a disrespect for the neighborhood. And it's a very small neighborhood. I mean, we're talking about a one-way street, a narrow one-way street that has houses only on one side. Across the street is an open lot and railroad tracks. So, it's a cut through. It's a business parking lot. We have, we have businesses each. We have a tire shop, which has a license for five cars to work on. Another 10, I believe, five to 10. The neighbors can correct me because they know better than I do, but five to five, five total stuff. There you go. Mm -hmm. um, but they have parking. They have parking for their customers. There's plenty of on-street parking on South Broadway, and the nail salon, which is on technically facing Front Street, it's on South Broadway, but it faces Front Street, has six parking spaces for the nail salon, in addition to what is available on South Broadway. So at the last meeting, Council Rodriguez had brought up the interests of the business owners. I went and, I went and introduced myself in the nail salon did not find myself the business owner. But what I did note is that while I was there, a car backed out and went the wrong way, where it's clearly marked not to do so, and proceeded the wrong way down the one-way street while I was there. This is not the business owner's fault. It's no one's fault than the individual drivers who continually show disrespect for neighbors that tend to be a little older, but they do have children. Some of them have children. You have some that are, require handicap accessibility. All they're looking for is the ability to pull in and out of their little dinky street, be able to walk to and from South Broadway on their own street, and not have to worry about cars doing the wrong thing. So you have a good representation here this evening. I'm gonna conclude my comments because they're more than capable to speak. They've been here for two hours, and I'm sure they want me to get away from the microphone. But I ask respectfully that you consider their request. These folks that live on Front Street, they pay their taxes on Front Street, they pay our salaries, they pay the DPW salaries, they pay everyone's salaries, and they're respectful folks. For the most part, they just want <coughs> quiet, they want their driveways, and they want to be able to go about their business. And I would just suggest to you that the businesses on South Broadway are doing just fine from my observation. So with that, I would also direct your attention to the emails that we got from uh, Engineer Puello and the DPW regarding the width of the street and all the measurements taken. I believe she also has an original plot plan of the street and it further indicates the measurements. So with that, Madam Chair, subject to your questions, I will turn it over to any other folks that wish to speak this evening. Um, so, for what I understood and what I have checked with the um, proof, so the nail salon has no parking? Six spots. Six dedicated parking spaces. Off street. Okay. Entire plaza. Okay. That, by the way, that, the, that is, that's I'm sorry, the, I didn't hear you. What's that? Three that, share. That's the entire plaza. Uh, six parking spaces. So there, I believe, two to three, there's at least two, possibly three small businesses in that. The six dedicated spaces, I would assume they're not marked 
specific to one of the three. So I would assume all six are dedicated to the three shops, or two to three shops. Is it two to two or three? Okay. So, okay. So, which is uh, the question that Councillor Rodrigo was asking is for the whole entire plaza, not for only specific one store, right? Yes. The, 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 the plaza originally was just one business. And when the person sold the business, they subdivided it into three. It was originally just one whole business. It was a laundromat. Uh, it, yeah, but you know, we have similar situation on um, North Broadway in um, same problem. We have a plaza with like five, seven business with, I think it was only nine space. So they've been blocking one each other. The police have to be there almost every hour just to ask people to move which I think uh, we are uh, misused our service because the police shouldn't be handled that situation. I think uh, we need to have some kind of control if we were gonna have some you know, type of business, they have to want some spaces, to try to find a space for the customer to be parking because residents, they shouldn't be you know, going through those headaches. So I, I don't know. And the, the beauty of this spot of South Broadway is it's not a very, you know, we all know Broadway and South Broadway. It's very dense with businesses and in some case, living space above the businesses. This particular case, you have no living space on this section of South Broadway. It's this building, it's the tire shop. Across the street, you have Hafner's and you have the uh, church, the congregational church. That has plenty of parking. They all have on-street parking and it's never used. I challenge anyone to go at any time of day. The only on-street parking utilized in that area is in front of the flower shop, if it's still the flowers. Is it still flowers? Flowers. And, um, you know, that's a small shop. Rodrigo Malanchi. Councillor Rodriguez. Councillor Abdul, thank you for bringing all this information over, telling, talking to the residents. Um, with all the respect to you and to the residents, um, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not planning tonight on, on doing anything with these items because I have more insights than just what is here. Um, this is something else. And with all the respect that I have, for you, I'm not planning on doing it today. I'm not planning on moving this item forward. Uh, there is a lot more than just what is here and what is presented. Well, Councilor, I think you owe it to us to tell us what that is. I'm the district councilor. I know. And you seem to know something I don't know, so you should share it with all of us. <clears throat> no, I just, um, I don't think this is going to be the scenario to talk about something that is not related to the item. Um, you see? Um, uh, okay. If you if you want to, you know, anyone want to speak, just come forward to the board. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but um, if we can bring the micro. Keep so out. no, 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 folks. If I could, Madam Chair. Yes. First of all, we need to decorum. So let's not be emotional. Mm -hmm. Name and address for the record, and then let them know why speak to the issue, hmm. which is the parking, which is to the width of the road, mm -hmm. and which is to the quality of life for the residents. That's what we're trying to thank do you there. very much, and I, I understand. Be, I understand. Thank you very much, so and good. like a Councillor Abdul was saying. This is not only to you. This is being applied to everyone who's come here. I understand this is something that is affecting directly to you. What we're saying is only one person is speaking and we have to respect what anyone can say. We have to come out with some sort of solution. That's what we're here for. And I did notice that you are in the wheelchair. I'm sorry. 
My name is Paul DeShano from 9 Front Street. My wife took those pictures that you're looking at. Mm -hmm. There were 80 plus traffic violations like that. Nobody is doing anything about it. Mm -hmm. if, the, if we're gonna be held up by city council, I'm, I'm ready to send those to CBS I team in Boston and the Registry of Motor Vehicles. Okay. So, Madam Chair. Yes, Councilor Maldonado. Front Street is a one-way street. Yes. Uh, coming into... South Broadway to Andover Street. To Andover Street. Okay. Uh, obviously, from what I can see there, it's very narrow. Yes. No sidewalk. Mm -hmm. No, the property line and goes outside our gate. Mm -hmm. Our property line is actually outside the gates. Mm -hmm. that it, because the road itself is narrow. Yeah, and what you are saying is that most of the people who park there and drive against the one way are mostly customers or the business. From the nail place. Okay. The nail place has six parking spaces which are filled by employees all day long. Okay, okay. so what you are looking for, and, and again I'm trying to understand what you are looking for is, are you looking for resident, residence parking only? Prohibit yes. Parking. Huh? Or prohibited? prohibited. We're looking for resident parking only. Or prohibited. No. Or prohibited the parking? That's the item. Yeah, no. no. Parking because in the street. No, no the, parking. Now you want so no the parking. item is from street, no parking request from the entrance street. So, which I believe uh, what they should be, Councilor Abdul, is resident parking only. Is that something that? There is no, uh, excuse me, there is no parking in the winter. Am I correct? No, you can't. No, no because it's too narrow. So basically, uh, one option is no parking at all mm -hmm. uh, during the day or night or create residential parking only but not during the winter. So residential parking would be, could be allowed during the day, but in the winter would not be allowed. Am I correct? Yes, yes. 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 because they are affected by the, if they're not part of the winter ban, they doesn't matter if they have they, the they, they would not be able to. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, Councilor, I believe through you, Madam Chair, Councilor, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, they're just looking for relief, whether it's permitted parking, whether it's prohibited parking. Mm -hmm. um, at previous meetings, we've worked with um, Director Jacquez, we've worked with Pat Ruiz, we've, there's been signage improvements, there's been um, paint on the streets. Um, I believe there's still gonna be, there's still, the DPW, when the time allows, is gonna put arrow, big arrows, so that um, really, there's no excuse for never knowing what direction the road goes in. Uh, believe me, there's a, plenty of signage there now. So all I'm saying to you is they don't, no offense, they, they don't suggest they have the perfect answer or all the answers, but they, what they do know unanimously is they need relief. And whether it's what you suggested, mm -hmm. that it be altered, you know, whether it be modified, I think this is the place to do it mm -hmm. while they're here, because I know yes. many of them probably wouldn't make a subsequent meeting or even the final meeting at the full council, whatever recommendation goes forward. So um, I hope that this evening, the uh, dialogue back and forth. I, I believe that we had a similar situation on, what's the name of that street going off uh, Lawrence Street uh, at the park, at the, bay, at the uh, Suffolk Park? Bon oh, Bunker Hill. Bunker Hill? Yeah. No. Uh, no, 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 on the right side. The right side. The, the point is that what was happening is that because uh, there was not enough parking on Lawrence Street, people were parking on the residential area. And what we did to resolve the problem was to do residential parking only, by permit only. So that kept uh, any, anybody uh, from Lawrence Street coming over and taking the residential parking from, from the residents there. So it seems to me that, that that is a possible option or 
do a restricting parking completely. <coughs> okay? And it seems to me that probably the best option would be to do residential parking only. May I, um, Councillor Maldonado, <coughs> and, and before they move, um, I think, yes, what you say makes a lot of sense, but if they go no parking, they also going to lose the opportunity exactly. to parking. Exactly. If they go through resident parking only, mm -hmm. you still can park and use the space on the street. No parking, not even you was going to be able to. So. guest like at Christmas I have guests that come to my house yes all you have to go all you have to go yes yeah if they go to the if they go to the police department and they guess and they try to get guest parking they allow to do yes they can go and get it at yeah, the police department yes they allow to have guests coming over Yes. So that is information that we also need to pass. All you have to do is whenever, you know, Christmas or whatever, you know that you're going to be having guest parking. I mean, my sons you, come over the house. You so. can do this. Do you have driveway in your house? Do yes. you have a space to park? You can switch car. Your son can park inside and you can park outside and you don't even have to go to the police because you are resident okay. of that. So by how they go is by your address. So your car has to be registered to that street address. But in case that you need more space, then you have to go to the police department and try to get passes. I got you. Okay? Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Yes. They have six parking spaces. Sir, I would like to know your name. Ed, Ed Butler from apartment seven on Front Street. Okay. They have six parking spaces, and they're filled almost all the time. Sometimes I walk by, going to CVS, and I look in, and there's three customers in there. There's always at least six vehicles. Some of them have to be on either the owner of one of these three businesses. They also have three dumpsters there, one for each one, who are on wheels. They're hanging out on the sidewalk. With a little shove for about 12 feet, they would put them in the alleyway. Now they have seven spaces. This is fine, except in the winter, they're going to lose all of this, because that's where all the snow gets pushed. When it, but anyway, six spaces always filled, easy enough to make a seventh, <coughs> And all of a sudden, you've got cars parking. I'm the first house right off of them. One hidden by the hedge, which I ignore quite a bit. Then you've got one there, and every house has got one going down the street. My question is, why do they have all these six spaces filled all the time? The candy, the cookie store, there's never one in there. The one in the middle, which is a uh, electronic store. There's usually a couple of people in there. I don't think that's it. So all I'm saying is there could be seven spaces, there are six. Why are they all filled when sometimes there's only one or two customers, maybe three? If the owners weren't parking there, and maybe they're not, but if they are, they get home and early enough to park across the street where they don't want their customers to go. Now all of a sudden you've got a space for seven customers. Now I could be completely wrong, but I'm just curious. No one has ever mentioned this, who's, who these cars belong to. It's just something to, to think about. Again, I think the solution, the best solution, is to put residents parking only. I agree. And, oh, and the residents will go and apply for a parking permit Okay, and that permit, because it's not attached to the car, you can give it to your visitors. No, 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 not give it to them, but no. lend it to them on that no. particular. Oh, that's no. Illegal. No. Okay. no, no, okay. no, 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 no. So they no. would have to go and get no, it. No, 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 They would have to go and because get it. Because uh... that car has to be registered in that street address. Mm -hmm. And if they give the permit, what they're going to do is when they run the plate, they're going to find out that car is not belong to the okay. street. Okay. So they're going to get a ticket. What they have to do is they can switch spot 
They can park it inside of the private driveway and they can park outside, which is a registered car to the street. So, but I think like we said, the best solution and thank you, this is the place for you to come and try to find a solution. And we always want to let you, not only you, but everybody who has some kind of issue, that that's what we're here for. So at resident parking, it will be the solution, but they have to go through a new items in the agenda because what we have now, I don't think it's going to be beneficial to you. So I don't know if he, Councilor Rabdu is agree with that and all you, so I don't know. Through you, Madam Chair. So I would suggest that I'm getting a positive nod from them that they seem agreeable with Council Maldonado's mm -hmm. suggestion, all of yours. Um, I would further suggest that I would probably not, um, would, I guess I would just rhetorically put it back, you don't need to answer because obviously Robert's rules doesn't allow it, but that they not necessarily need to return for the hearing that will occur you know, if I get it filed tonight or tomorrow before the agenda closes, I guess they would be back here in about four to six weeks. They don't need to come back. We know the issue. They don't need to come back. If you press it, you can speak on behalf, and we know uh, the situations. But, you know, I agree. But Because I think we're only missing two residents, right? And one of which is your sister. So. And the, and your parents are the other one? Yeah, my neighbor is the other one. I speak from the parents. Okay. So, yes, Madam Chair, if that's, then I suggest a, a withdrawal um, and then permit parking. Mm -hmm. Permit, residential permit parking. Residential parking, yes. I will uh, submit that in the morning to the clerk before the deadline, hopefully. What's today? Have we already met? We may have already missed the deadline. <laughs> if we miss the deadline, it'll get submitted and yeah. taken. I didn't hear you, I'm sorry. So the ordinance committee, all right, so that is not the business of the ordinance committee. Okay, so out of respect of their time, they, they can't, they cannot do anything about this. Council, did you have a question? Uh, okay. Thank what you. I uh, Councillor Abdu. Yes, sir. What I suggest is that we withdraw this document, put in a new document, and maybe we can treat it, uh, tr treat it at the full council, suspend the rules and treat it at the full council so yeah. that so they don't have to come back because we yeah. have already discussed it here. Okay. Thank you. So we can do that. Thank you, Council Maldonado. Thank yeah. you, Madam Chair. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So what are we gonna we gonna withdraw this item? Mm -hmm. Is we, huh? No, we're going to withdraw. They're not going to do anything. What? No, this is not. This is, this to is not the item. But they're not going to do. Yeah. It's not going to do anything here. We're not going to do anything. Remove it. We're not going to do anything with this item. Excuse me. Can I speak? Yes. I know we pretty much can uh, uh I'm trying to think of a word came to a consensus on resident parking, which seems to be a good idea. But also the quality of life on that street is with cars that are repeatedly going in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. And the street has no sidewalks. So I walk the street and I get these cars that leave these businesses. I'm not sure which ones they're coming out of, but they'll go down the street three quarters away, turn around, come back home. Then they want you to move out of the street. I have actually been sitting there taking pictures from South Broadway of all these cars, including taxis, and it's just unbelievable. It's public safety, it's a narrow street. And you get the resident parking, that's one thing, but when you got all these people, that, it's actually ignorance to the law that maybe if the DPW or someone in the city can have a camera put up at that intersection to be monitored by some agency to start citing these people that are using the street improperly to pay the benefit. You want to get your nails done? You want to get your cell phone fixed? 
hey, that's fine. Cost us seventy five dollars for nails, fifty dollars or seventy five dollars for traffic violation, and I'm sure that'll cure it. But it's definitely a dangerous situation. You got cars speeding up the wrong way. They they say they don't know where they're going, and and they're very rude. I even had one woman ask me one night if I was a police officer. I said it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. You want to hit me? Go ahead. <laughs> okay. But. Um, I do suggest they do something with enforcement. I know they have been down there. Captain McAmyer has been down there with Officer Poisine and a few others monitoring the traffic flow, but they can't be there all the time. So I think it may be a suggestion of a camera that could be monitored remotely by the police department or whoever just to take care of the, the public safety issues on the street. Thank okay. you. Thank you. And I'm from Thank 27. I'm at the wider end of the street because I was a little bigger. Okay, thank you. So, Councilor Maldonado. So, uh, what are we going to do? I think we should. Motion to the table. <coughs> Second. <laughs> motion to send it up and to be removed, to be withdrawn. To be that's withdrawn. The only, that's the only thing that we can do right that now. That we can do. Withdraw the document. Withdraw Why the do document. we have to keep Simple. it here? We're not going to act on it. it it's nothing that we're going to do. Are we, uh, there is a second to discussion? I'm sorry? Uh, second for discussion. No, you're not discussion for discussion, but before we call the motion, we say that we, we, are, we I know, but we're not discussion. I'm just letting you know that we're not going to take any action because it's nothing that we can do. Okay. What is the problem with, with withdrawing the document? Yeah. What is the, your objection to that? When the, when huh? we, once we have the new item here, and then we can withdraw this. But, if the, if the document is withdrawn, right. then another document is submitted, then we will be able to discuss that. Exactly. So what is the problem? <clears throat> what is the problem? We, we have no second to discussion, so I won't be able to explain to you. <laughs> OK, I second for discussion. Go ahead. No, no, no. I'm not, I'm not, no, I'm no, not he doesn't second. want no, to have a discussion. He didn't second it. He okay, didn't say the motion. He doesn't and want and to do anything. I make the motion. OK, I make the motion that we send it up to be withdrawn. Are you going to second for discussion? No. Okay. Make the motion to table the item, and then we, we, we can. Uh... But there's no second for that either. But there's no second for that either, and, and we don't need to table the document. We're not going to take any item. I mean, we're so not going to take any But if we, if we are going to withdraw the document, tell me what is the purpose uh, table in it. Can you, Ali, can you give me a reason? I'm not ready to withdraw the document. I'm sorry? I am not ready no, to No, but again, I'm asking you to give me a reason why we need to table the document if we are not going to act on it. So tell me what is the, give me a good why reason. We have the second document here and then we can withdraw that. Uh, this one. Um, you know what? Let me explain. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is going to happen, so we just have to do what I recommend you to do, just, just to place a new document and we can open for discussion. Um, motion to table the document 248.17. Motion to table document 248. Make the motion to table, even though it's ridiculous. Um, All in favor? Aye. The ayes have it. Thank you all for being here and for the waiting time. <coughs> Thank you. I can, I can never understand the rationale. Okay. Do you want this? To, do you want this back? Yes. I think they should. Oh, I am going to the IT. Can I get a motion to take document two? 321.17 out of table. 321. They come back with it. Um, with the documents, documents that we request. Second. All those in favor? Aye. The Aye. ayes have it. Document 321 it was a transfer vendor license. They, we just table until they uh, bring the document. Can you give it to? Um,
So that's the one. It was the 13. The 14, yeah. The 14. The 14. <coughs> dice que pasó? Exactly. Pre-operation, mobile. Not on. Seeable. I never see this document before, so. Um, and that was done by the day, which is March. Yeah. Um, Why don't we uh, send mm -hmm. correspondence to inspection or service to clarify whether or not it's, it's the vehicle? Design. Can we send the pending that, pending docu that document. documentation for them not to come back here? Mm -hmm. So can I get a motion to send document 321 with uh, no recommendation pending the approval no, pending the, pending the clarification, the, the clarification of the, the inspection or service? which we're gonna ask them to go back and, sure. and kind of bring the documents. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so that motion include the so uh, uh, recommend the uh, correspondence to inspection service to clarify this document, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So motion has been made. Properly, uh, second. Properly second, all those in favor? Aye. The ayes have it. Tiene que ir al departamento de inspección para que manden un documento o algo que clarifiquen que el, el truck ya está, puede, puede operar, ¿entiendes? Porque esto nosotros no, no habíamos visto, no hay algo claro en eso. Eh, me, me enviaron otro, otro documento. Ah, pero que ah, callado, pero... Ok, ese, ok. Pasen okay. ese. Ok. Por acá, ustedes pasen todo. That one is? Yeah. Oh, we have to withdraw the motion then. Let me make a copy. Let me make a, let, let me see. Okay, wait, wait. wait. December 21, yeah. Part threes. Yeah, oh, mobile. Sí, sí, sí. yeah. Yeah. That's, it, ese era el documento que necesitamos. Oh. Um, Modesto, we need to withdraw the motion. Yes. And, and, uh, we, I withdraw my motion and make another one. I send so. it up with a favor of recommendation. Second motion. Motion has been made properly. Second, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Document 321 was sent out with a favor recommendation. Thank you. Okay. Gracias. Okay. Ese era el documento que necesitábamos. Gracias. <laughs> okay. Gracias. Um, okay. Y, are you here for any specific item? Eh, tú tienes que regresar. Oh, yeah. Hold on one second. Regresar en octubre 3. El martes que viene. Next Tuesday. You need to come back next Tuesday. Okay. 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 La misma hora. A la misma hora. Yes. Gracias. Okay. Yes. Yes. My name is Jeffrey Petrolo. I live at 341D South Broadway. Okay. And this is in reference to 45 slash uh, 4 11. What is the document? What is the document number? Okay. The docket number is 4 15. I mean 4 slash 15. It's in reference to an illegal curb Before. cut and demolition. Before we open a discussion, let's give us some time just to find the document so that way we can open a discussion. Yes. Okay. Um, can I? Four. Excuse me, Councillor Reyes? Yes. Can I go get? Uh, here he is right here because okay. he, he wants to listen to this. Yeah. Councillor Abdul. Four dash. It's four slash fifteen. Fifteen. Wow. <laughs> Who's that? It goes way back. It's it's been open for two years. Mm -hmm. Oh, here it is on the last page. The one from the last. The one from the last. The last page. The last page. The last page is number. The last page. Uh, page seven. Right here. One. Oh yeah. Here. Okay. Can I get a motion to take document 4-15 out of table? So move. Second. 
All those in favor? Aye. The ayes have it. <coughs> Document 4-15 is the legal corps cut and demolition, demolition and excavation of the sidewalk avoiding on the state highway known as Route 28, Jeffrey Petrillo. Okay. Yes. May I speak? Yes. Now, yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, um, but we need to find the document before we start speaking. Of. I understand. Thank you, and thank you for being here. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Petrillo, and I've been before the city council numerously. Yeah. Uh, you might recognize me as last week, and I brought up this curb cut, and I said to you that um, back then, in 2014, when I was speaking on this illegal curb cut, that it was a means of opening Pandora's box. And some people laughed at me. And I said, well, you might not laugh at me if Mr. Martineau decides to sell his business and the new owner says, well, there's a nice curb cut with the rampway that goes right over the sidewalk into an unpermitted vacant city lot zoned residentially. Mm -hmm. Now, it spawns the idea of perpetualness that I, as the owner of this body shop, can use that property, which is unpermitted, which in building contractors lingo is virgin land, to take my cars from out of the car corral on Inman Street, bring them around and circulate them onto that lot and then into the body shop to finalize and process for my customers. Now, what we've said for years is, but how do you get around the city and zoning board law 29-11? where it's very, very specific. This is not a matter where it's the Petrillo's word against the Martino's or the new owner who just took over as of July 12th, 2017. This is not us saying, hey, you can't do that. And then he says, oh, yes, I can. No, 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 that's not that, not at all. This is not even a civil matter where I need an attorney to take this to court. This is a matter where the city is bound to uphold the law, which is 29-11 specifically, and not just issue cease and desist orders from Commissioner Blanchett or past commissioners such as <coughs> Louise Ferris, Robert Quimby, and then let it go for a year or two and allow the person who owns the body shop to continuously park cars in there, spawned by the idea and the action of an illegal curb cut. Now, I want to go through uh, something that I've prepared so that we can reintroduce the ideas of what I'm talking about. Okay. So, from uh, January to March 2014, the city performed an investigation that was authorized by new, Rivera, uh, new mayor, Dan Rivera. He authorized Peter Blanchett, the building commissioner at that time, he still is the building commissioner today, to look into this matter and investigate it. By the end of March, I believe it was March 24th or March 25th, 2014, I was called to Commissioner Blanchett's office, and I held a meeting with him, face-to-face -face meeting, and he told me that in no way, no how, could I ever, could I ever find any, permission, any permits, building permits, that were granted to remove a 24-foot linear section of granite curbstone coupled with demolishing and excavating a city sidewalk that's been there since the 1940s, as is. And it was 
as is when we first purchased our property on July 31st, 1989. Now, in 2005, October of 2005, this action of an illegal curb cut and demolishing a city sidewalk in order to build a rampway over and above the city sidewalk as an easement to get into an unpermitted property, which myself, coming from a family of builders, uh, begun by my uncle, Thomas Petrollo, and it's, it's continued today by my cousin, his son, Kevin, we find that ludicrous because these are not the actions that are taken, uh, the process of actions that are taken. In other words, what I'm saying to you is this. If I had an unpermitted lot, I don't go to Commissioner Blanchett and say, hey, is it okay if I put a fence to surround the, the lot? And by the way, I want to perform a curb cut first. Those are not the, that's not the process that you go through. And I believe Commissioner Blanchett knows this. So, let me continue. We sought the city to sign a prepared document for over the next nine months. That was up until January of 2015. They would not do that. We then introduced a document citing the Freedom of Information Act to receive specific documents, and the city said no, including Attorney Bodie. We were never given specific reasons why. All I know is I kept trying to get these documents, and I said, listen, you, you're not providing me public information documents, like cease and desist orders that were issued against that specific piece of property. It's also known as parcel number two. It's a residentially zoned, unpermitted lot. And it's been unpermitted since the 1940s. Next, we then left the case open to the Ordinance Committee. At that time, we wanted certain specific documents to buttress other documents that we already had as what I would call empirical proof. The city said no and left this case in limbo for the last two years. Since early 2017, the patrollers have decided to take the information we have in hand and tailor it to go in hand in hand or side by side to the city and zoning board law 29-11. So as to have the illegal curb cut removed, in other words, recurbed, so as to have the illegal curb cut removed and so as to remove any ideas by Mr. Martineau that he is able to use the illegal curb cut and cement rampway built over the city sidewalk as a legal entrance Three into a... Yes. Can, can we specify the, the, the address or the location and that way we can uh, probably it, it's, the, the address is still 341 South Broadway. 341 South Broadway. It's a vacant open lot. It's grassy. But because um, the reason I'm asking is because over here it doesn't provide us with an address. So <coughs> we're just talking about something. But okay, you know what I mean. The, so what's the okay, if, are you familiar with South Broadway, sir? So what's the address? Three it's what? 341. 341. South Broadway. Okay. Okay. It's not here on the other on the it, island. That's it's the location of the then for 40 years. Uh, no, I'm saying on the item 415, uh -huh. it, doesn't say, it doesn't say the address. So when we start talking, talking about one specific situation, I don't know what, what was the... Spe the I understand that could be a problem. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So, uh, continuing. Um, I believe I was at the point where I said that we were going, we have decided to take the information we have hand in hand and tailor it to, to go hand in hand or side by side to city law, city and zoning board law 29-11, so as to have this illegal curb cut removed, in, in other words, recurbed, so as to remove any ideas by Mr. Martineau that he is able to use the illegal curb cut and cement rampway built over the city sidewalk as a legal entrance into a vacant, unpermitted, residentially zoned lot, parcel number two, that he's, 
that he's using for really mixed use. It's incongruent with 29-11 as well. Um, and we said also that um, Parcel 2 is now owned by Mr. Angelo Memolo of A&M Auto Body as of July 12, 2017. We don't, we don't approve of any owner or new owner calculating that we have an inherited and illegal career cut as a means of entering parcel number two, which that lot is deemed as on the map facing South Broadway, so as to park and store cars uh, on this unpermitted residentially zone lot known as parcel number two for reasons such as, I was told I could park cars on that lot by the inspectors. Incidentally, this story was verified on August 28, 2017 with Pat Ruiz, who told me on no uncertain terms, I told the new owners and their attorneys that he could not use that land to park or store cars as a part of their daily auto body operations. So now we have an incongruent story where one party says one thing and Pat Ruiz says another. So um, for your information, this is also against or incongruent to city and zoning board law 29-11. If time allowed, we, we would like to get into what former building commission has had to say with erecting any fences versus granting fence permits. Uh, we would also like to cite other city and zoning laws that prohibit commercial business, businesses from infringing on residentially zoned properties and enforcing the law that states you require 200 linear feet of distance as approaching our you know, lot line and nearest wall from our neighbor's auto body building. Five, we would also like to remind our neighbor using the illegal curb cut that his building was not, uh, using the, uh, the illegal curb cut that his building was built w around 1939 to 1940 and is not coded as explosion proof and neither are the cars he wants to park and store incongruent with 29-11 on parcel number two. Number six, this is concerning what I labeled as an inherited curb cut. We want to ask the city, how does anybody purchasing an auto body commercial business adopt the idea that he can inherit as in being grandfathered by the city to use an illegal easement into the property known as the vacant unpermitted lot known as parcel number two in order to park and store cars, which again is incongruent to 29-11. And furthermore, speaking of grandfathered, that's usually when you take the former business name. He elected not to do that. He kept his own name, which I understand has been since 1966. So Metropolitan Auto Body is no more. So I think that this was part of uh, due diligence on his attorney's parts to verify and check into that, you know, what he's grandfathered in. But I'm also certain that he would have never paid the amount of money that he paid for that business had he not been assured that he would be at least be able to use the commercial, commercial business zone areas, which is the building and the car corral, which is on Inman Street, right behind the building. We're not, we're not contesting that. Madam Chair. Yes. I, I, need to ask you, I need to ask you some questions. Sure. Yes. You're indicating, number one, that the lot behind the business is a residential. Am I correct? No, the lot behind the business is zone commercial and business. It goes with the building. Now, the lot that's hold, in between hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, the building. Hold it. Okay. G give me a second so that I can understand. Okay. You spoke about a driveway that was cut illegally. 
it's an into a property that is residential. Now there's a slope into the business. So what are they what are they using that piece of property for right now? What are they using it for? Because they, there's no that that open they can't see a way that they can drive down and and there is no overhead doors or anything like that for that business. So what do you, I'm not sure exactly what you're referring Let to. Let me, uh, can, 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 you, can we see that picture again, uh, yes. Mr. Rodriguez? It, it, that was the one showing you. The, yes. There is no slope going from the vacant lot down into the there Cockerell and Inman the Street. There. There's a fence. Wait. The first one. Wait. Sorry. There is a fence, sir. There's a drop about 20 feet. That's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. So if, if an illegal... <coughs> yes. Let me show you this. I'm sure, I'm sure what you're saying, but this is what you are talking about. Am I yes, correct? this is the okay. lot right here. Okay. What are they using? This is residential. <laughs> That's residential. Okay. You can't use that mixed use. Okay. Twenty nine dash okay. eleven. I understand that. What are they using it for right now? To store and park cars. Okay. As daily operation. Which is, a, which is an illegal use. Correct. Okay. And the problem, and I'm getting, I'm going to get to this right because, now. Because, so, so they only park here, and these are the businesses here? No, this is not a business. No. This is the business right here. This is the building We're, right here. Right here. The, this is the body shop. This is 341, and this is 341 also. But this is residential. How can there be 341 and 341? I don't know, but that's the way it's labeled on the map, unless, unless I can be corrected otherwise, because my... Is, my, it, is it possible that they, if you go that like they got this, a zoning change on this lot this, that is no longer no, residential? No, this lot has been in effect since August of 1943 and still presently is in effect. I checked it out with Dan McCarthy of the zoning board. He just, uh, yes. m Mr. Maldonado just brought up a very important point. Yes. He, he asked me about the Zoning Board Law 29-11. He asked me if it's still in effect. One of the first things I did was I went to Dan McCarthy of the Zoning Board uh -huh. a few weeks ago. I asked him very pertinent questions. First question I asked him was, I know all about 29-11. It was the very law that Louise Ferris and Bob Quimby used to refuse any type of permits, fence permits, building permits, uh, whether Paul Sr. wanted to go on top of the auto body, the building itself, she said no. And it was also turned by, down by the zoning board. This is going back as far as like 1967 to the, to the early 70s, through the 80s. And it was finalized with perhaps, uh, as my understanding goes, uh, with Paul Sr.'s attempt to put a fence around the yard. And she told him, no, I'm not going to give you a permit for that because I know what you want to do. You want to then ask me for a car storage permit, also known as a cockerel, and I'm not going to do that. What is it you're looking for? This, be be, be specific. What, what is you're looking for? Okay. Mm -hmm. We had said this before. If you had, not you, the city, had taken our advice and, as an advisement, if you know, and it's already been proven, that the curb cut was done illegally, mm -hmm. right? Then why don't you do something about it? You wouldn't allow someone to do that directly in front of your home. Of course not. No. It also spawns the idea <coughs> that any other resident in the neighborhood could say, hey, when the city workers are not working on Saturday and Sunday, I'll bring in a construction crew with the diamond cut saw, and I'll remove a section of... Okay. Let, let, let so you know, see where I'm going with this. Let me try to simplify things. What you are looking for is, number one, to stop the illegal use of the lot, number well, one. Well, it's, it's spawned by the curb cut, and I can... Okay. I can. Hold it, hold it. Okay. So you are looking, I assume that you're looking for two things. Number one, to, for the city to 
tell the owner of the business to restore the sidewalk as it was before. But see, he's not going to do that because no, no, he didn't no, do no, it. No, 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 wait, wait, wait a second. The, uh, uh, again, I'm trying to understand what you are looking for. Okay. Okay? So you are looking for the sidewalk to be restored as it was before, before it was cut illegally. So that it number eliminates one. the ideas number of one. using the property okay. illegally. And number two, to stop the illegal use of the property for commercial use when it's a residential use. Am I point, correct? Point of correct. Point of information. information. So, Maldonado, uh, I'm, what I'm seeing here that the curb up probably is not the issue because the curb up, uh, so people can, is the, is the users of the land that is the problem because if it is residential and the curb cap, the purpose of the curb cap uh, is to use it for residential purpose, that won't be a problem. But you can't do so, that. Except if it was done illegally. Uh -huh. Except if it was done illegally. It's done illegally. Exactly. And you can't do that, by the way, what you just suggested, because there's a process that you have to go through to the zoning board yeah. as well as the Department of Inspectional Services. You can't just, <laughs> first of all, with regard to curb cuts, it's very specific. Anything 72 inches or greater requires a permit. It's in black and white. You cannot do that, let alone go 24 feet. Okay, so basically what you're looking for, you're looking for two things that the uh, sidewalk be restored to what it used to be and that the uh, lot is used legally. If it's used legally, then he has to start all over again with his, uh, in other words. Exactly, it's, exactly. So, uh, my suggestion, my, uh, because we can spend the whole night here yes. and there's a lot of mm -hmm. items that we need to discuss. My suggestion is that we ask uh, Pat Ruiz to come at the next meeting, at the next meeting, so that we can look at this whole situation, right. and I would like you to be here at that time so that we can review right. uh, number one the illegality of the use of the property in a non conforming way, okay, right. and also look at the situation of the curve cut hmm. uh, uh, that was done supposedly illegally. We don't know that, or well, it was demonstrated, Councillor Rodriguez, yes. or it was demonstrated, yes to me by Commissioner Blanchett or, for orders of Mayor Rivera. Mm -hmm. Or through you, changing the zoning of the lot. Exactly. And exactly. then everything is legal. Yes. That's, exactly. that's never gonna happen because it would require a special okay, permit. But yeah, like they say, we just need to ask, or oh, invite it. Um, Let's get Pat Ruiz. Lewis here. And that so way we, we can, can get more okay, information and, and we yeah. can all and, be in the same. And I, I'm pretty much assured that when Pat Ruiz is here, and with regard well, to what I s hmm? let them do their work. Well, this Let's is what, this is what we're say. saying. This is why I'm here. I, I mean, I, I I have various emails sent to then Councillor yeah. Eileen Bernal. Mm -hmm. There's also other issues involved <clears throat> in here concerning the cur illegal curb cut and then the usage of this property. So, it, it, is, okay. it is a so, quality of life issue. It's a privacy issue. It's, a, it's an issue that you could say that there was a legal precedent already set back Should in 1989. Mm -hmm. So move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Again, I'm gonna make a motion that we invite either Pat Ruiz or uh, Mr. Blanchett, who has been there longer, or both. both. Yes. We're gonna invite them both to be here so that we can discuss in more details and see what we can do to correct the problem. Right. Okay? Okay. So I, motion I, is to, um, the motion? To, to, the motion is to invite Pat Ruiz and Peter Blanchet to come here to uh, discuss this issue and what, and how we can find resolution to this problem. Okay, motion. Second. That, that's the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to take the document. So, so we're gonna continue this favor? when? For the next meeting. Yeah, for the next meeting. The next meeting, which or, is going. Or when they're ready, because or I mean, they, they, need, when they need time. Yes. Excuse me? Or when they're ready. So we, we are going to invite them to the next meeting. If, okay. they, if they are they able to come, some? you will know. Yes. Okay. So uh, okay. they're going to send correspondent to you when you need to come back. If they're ready to be here, the next city, I mean, next ordinance meeting, 
you're going to be notified that you need to be present. Okay. So um, let me table the document before. Can I get a motion to table document 415? So move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. I just want to know, say this, you know, for the record. <coughs> um, I feel kind of bad for the new owner mm -hmm. because in the way he spoke to me, I believe he's sincere. Um, and I asked him one very pertinent question regarding this parcel number two, you know, unpermitted vacant lot that you showed me the picture to for uh, on Google Maps. And when, I, when he was done explaining to me, I said to him, who said to you that you can use this lot to park cars and, you know, as going about your business? And he also kind of coupled that with, if he got my permission, in other words, the Petrillo's permission. I, I believe what he, what he was referencing was something that he was told by Paul Jr. in the course of uh, salesmanship of selling his body shop to the new owner, Mr. Memolo. And I allowed him to speak in his entirety. And after I got the gist of what he was saying, I asked him, who told you that you could do this? Because in the back of my mind, I, I already know that this cease and desist audit is already... Probably the person who sold it to him. <laughs> and, and exactly, and he did mention yeah. the realtor. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And it, so, now, so now it's a matter of what I told him was, you know, uh, I feel kind of bad because your attorneys that you told me you had, two or three attorneys, didn't do what's called due diligence. Yeah. That's, that's on their part. They represent you. So now we have a situation, and I, and I felt bad that I had to tell them that there's an existing law, 29-11, which you're going to stub your toe on every, every which way you turn, left, right, down the center. You're going to run into 29-11, which prohibits you from doing this. And sooner or later, they're going to tell you, if you don't want to listen to us with the cease and desist orders, then we're going to proceed with fines. And if you don't want to listen to us then, we're going to come with the tow trucks, Sheehan's, Valley Towing, Cody's, and we'll remove the cars at your expense. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councilor, can I get a motion to take document 279, 17 out of table? Uh, actually, I can take a, uh, a block and we can read um, all the... <coughs> Can I get a motion to take document 279, 280, 281, 293, and 297 as a block and added um, out of table? So move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. The ayes have it. Okay. Uh, let's just read through the uh, office. May I, Madam yeah? Chair, may I read the uh, recommendation uh, for each one of the documents uh, as we approve it to uh, speed up the process? We can, yeah, you're sure you can. Okay. So he recommended the first one. So yes. motion to send uh, to document to 7917 to order public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. 280. Can you repeat that, please? 279. Okay, hold on, hold on. You want me to repeat all the documents? Just uh, the motion. Oh, well, the motion is to send a fa with favor recommendation to order a public hearing. That's just for 279. 279. 279. Yes. And 280. Now 280, uh, can I send, get a motion to, oh, well, I would like to make a motion to send uh, document 280, 17 uh, to our public hearing. Second. All those in favor? Aye. They Aye. Have it. 281, also. It's already, uh, one, handy. it's already one there. It's already one there, so we don't have to take any action on that one, but can we? Withdraw the document. Can we withdraw the motion because? Withdraw the document? Yeah. So, motion to withdraw at 281. So Senate move. To withdraw. So move. Oh. Uh, Can go responding to the auto? Um. and say that is one there. If they already have one spot, I think uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, we can leave a Maybe table. Maybe two we different can, people. Yeah, 
we can ask them to come and we can explain that they can well, we also can send use. It over for well, we can send and it. send correspondence to the yes. and explain that, that they, if he is one, they can use uh, the spot. Okay. So send uh, to the full council for withdraw and send, and send correspondence to the author of the um, of the petition, um, telling them that we will join the document because there is one uh, already there, one parking spot already there. Okay. Madam Chair, on document 29317, I would like uh, I want to yeah, make he, the motion that we, more information. that we need we need to send correspondence to Sarah Perez to get in touch with Officer Scanlon so that he can understand what the concerns are. And we can table. Motion? Yes. yes. Uh -huh. Second. All in favor? Aye. Document. Motion to table the document. Second. All in favor? Aye. The ayes have it. Document 297 also is uh, yeah, a handicap, and he, uh, he approved so that. Motion to send to the full council to order public hearing 297.17. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The have it. The next document is, uh, can I get a motion to take document 218 and 219 as a, as a block and as a table item? So move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah, I have it. 218. So uh, set the motion to send it to the full council to order public hearing. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah, I have it. And 219, what he said that we need to refer this document to DPW, which we had. So can I get a motion to second correspondent to DPW just for update about this item? So move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Ask, can I get a motion to table document? Hey, to, move. to table the document. So move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Can I get a motion to take 158 out of table? So, so move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah, I Okay, he is request a 15 parking street the request. Yeah, there is a problem with this. Uh, the uh, the actual request is not on Lawrence Street. It's on the uh, it's on on the other street that is perpendicular to La to Lawrence Street. So, so I need to I need to get the uh, the actual address. Address for that. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Let, let, let right. me let me do that. Okay. Okay. So, so table. Motion to table one yes. Second. And the last document is motion, to, motion yes. to table has been second. And second. All in favor? Aye. The ayes have it. Document 12217 out of motion. table. Second out of table, second of motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. The ayes have it. Okay, he's. Motion to send it to the full council to order public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Any no, other document? Have, yes, we have this one right here. Okay. Which one is that? Which one? Uh, 411, 16. Four, what is that? Oh, that's right. 411. 16. 411, 16. Mm -hmm. 4, 11, 16. So, uh, Which page is that one? It's inside the folder. It's right here. Inside the folder. It's right here. Mm. So, I don't know. I don't see it in the agenda. Because it's for the parking on Young yes. Avenue, the way for the street is 25 feet. This is the same type of situation. Yeah, as, but on uh, this one, uh, on the other one, no, the, the other one was one way. This thing is not one oh, way. Oh, this is not a one way. Mm -hmm. That's why he changed his recommendation to So we need to allow uh, it. Yeah. But I mean, we're not, a, we're not a, on the other one, we're not allowing it yet. We got no, no, we are not. <laughs> no. So, uh, do we need to take it out of the table? Uh, do we have it on the uh, on the agenda? That's, that's the what thing. I. That's the thing. I don't see that document in the agenda. Page three. Page three. Towards the end of page. Yes, it's right here. Yeah. December six. So, uh, motion to take item 11, um, 411. 411, 16 out of the table. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So motion to send this item to the full council with no recommendation. Second. All those in favor? Oh, well, with a, not a no recommendation, basically with a uh, negative recommendation because, I mean, they're not recommending it. No, because of the, um, the wife of the twin. Too narrow, and it's going to affect mm -hmm. it's only 16 inches. So, with no recommendation? No, I mean, uh, 
With a, uh, with a no recommendation. With no recommendation. No recommendation, it's not, not going to be either negative or positive. So no recommendation. Be, no negative recommendation. Negative, negative yes. recommendation. So you want to make the motion? No, you, you're making the motion. I second it. I second. Um, all the favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> so what else? Is that a negative? No uh, recommendation. With, is with a negative same. recommendation. Okay. <laughs> with a negative recommendation. Made by Rodriguez and I second the motion. Oh, you see? <laughs> <laughs> Any other documents? There is a few more. That's here. it. Folder. Okay. Look, look, those are two other things? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, 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 they are. No. 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 And that's yeah. Yeah. No, there's no more. Actually. Madam Chair, I would like to make a motion that we adjourn. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Council. <laughs> So, explícame, explícame, I'm trying to understand.